Harper was honored by the National Life Group and is the only officer here in the state of Alabama to be given the National Hero Award. This award is given out every year to 50 people throughout the U.S. Harper was honored for founding the Power of Life Foundation within the Birmingham community. That foundation provides food, housing, clothing, and youth development to the area. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. What's your biggest investment? More than likely, it's your home. So treat it that way when you hire a painting contractor. PBS Painting, there are no gimmicks, no $99 special. Just quality painting and someone who treats your home with the same respect that you do. At PBS Painting, we have been painting for years and look forward to many more years to come. With PBS Painting, the job gets prepped properly, whether it's cleaning, scraping, or priming. We always use quality products, which is a must for a quality paint job. So if you're looking for a painter that doesn't need upfront money and is on the job at all times, then please give me a call. Scott Bowers and PBS Painting, 294-5122. That's PBS Painting, 294-5122. Look at some of our work on Facebook at PBS Painting Montgomery. I am a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip-resistant work shoes. Skechers slip-resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. <laughs> and that difference is why I wear Skechers slip-resistant work shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air-cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. Are you someone who tries to drive all distracted by your phone? Someone who props it on the steering wheel or peeks down at it for a glance or just scrolls and scrolls? If so, you could be the next person to get into a fender bender, get a ticket, veer off the road, or even cause a crash that kills you or someone else. Enough already. Put the phone away or pay. Paid for by NHTSA. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. After damning politicians uphill and down dale for many years as rogues, vagabonds, frauds, and scoundrels, I sometimes suspected, like everyone else, I often expect too much of them. Joey Clark. Welcome. Into news and views in the afternoon, or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. Appreciate all the love on YouTube and the X platform. Yeah, you know, this is just a humble little talk show here in Montgomery, Alabama, but we are growing online, and I appreciate that. And I also appreciate, well, the gentleman we're about to bring on joining this humble little talk show. We have the one, the only, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, how you doing today? Oh, I'm fine, Joey. Joey, you're a dear friend, and I'm uh, happy to play a small part in your success. Well, thank you for that, sir. And uh, great success on your part, too. And, man, you, uh, you're you not running out of things to cover with the international situation going on right now. What's your reaction to, you know, it's one thing to be fighting in Gaza and the way they're fighting in Gaza but now striking a top Iranian commander in Damascus, are we heading towards wider war? Well, I think Netanyahu wants a wider uh, war. The longer the war goes on, the longer he stays uh, in office. Um, they th What they did yesterday was an act of war because uh, under international law, consulates are immune, even in wartime, even if, even if Syria had declared war on Israel, and Israel had declared war on Syria, and Iran had declared war on Israel, and Israel had declared war on Iran. Even if there were those legal declarations of war, consulates are immune from knowing intentional direct attacks. So this was clearly uh, an act of war, uh, attempting to provoke 
the Iranian government. I don't know if they're going to succeed in that uh, provocation, uh, but they will uh, succeed in rubbing raw, even more so, the attitude of the uh, Arab street, so to speak, uh, in that part of the world. The, uh, the average folks are utterly inflamed to what Israel's doing, and they keep adding fuel uh, to that fire. So I wouldn't be surprised if some state actor enters to resist uh, Israel militarily for fear that the state actor might be overthrown if it doesn't do what the overwhelming majority of the public in its country seems to want to have done. And it seems this administration, it, like a lot of past administrations, thinks, well, we can have our, for lack of a better word, client states on a leash. But it seems like the tail keeps wagging the dog. Another example I'll give is the Ukrainians just hit, I think, Russia's third largest oil refinery. And the White House is very mad about it. But you're the one who gave them the weapons to do that. Uh, uh, the White House has no credibility uh, whatsoever in, in either war. The reason uh, a third of Ukraine is destroyed and nearly a generation of young men is gone is because the White House dispatched then Prime Minister Boris Johnson of uh, Great Britain to uh, encourage President Zelensky not to sign a very detailed, very fair, uh, negotiated uh, peace treaty uh, with Russia, which would have allowed Ukraine to remain intact, taken NATO out of it, and, and let it remain uh, neutral. Uh, instead, the United States promised war, promised to support them, and now five to 600,000 young men are dead or disabled, so disabled they can't go back to the battlefield. I mean, that in a country the size of Ukraine is a generation uh, of, young, of young people, uh, teachers, shopkeepers, cab drivers, mechanics, uh, airplane pilots, dead, gone. Right. Uh, because of the uh, American lust for war and misguided hatred for Vladimir Putin, the belief that America can use Ukraine as a battering ram with which to drive President uh, Putin from office. On the, Ga on the Gaza front, there's no question this is genocide. And under international law, financing genocide makes you as morally and legally culpable as actually pulling the triggers. Hmm. Now, it is on the genocide question from the International Criminal Court, they uh, essentially agreed to hear it. Like, they have a finding that then allows them to pursue this, and it's going to take years to actually come to a full conclusion? Apparently, apparently so. I don't know how much longer this is going to go on. Uh, Professor Sachs uh, argues that there are five uh, degrees of uh, famine, and uh, much of Gaza is in the fifth, meaning uh, death in a couple of weeks because the uh, IDF will not allow food, water, and medicine in. And many Israelis on their own, without, without even the IDF there, are uh, blocking trucks. Hmm. Well, Joe Biden is such a humanitarian. Why is he funding genocide? And why doesn't he send American trucks there? I can't imagine the IDF firing on American trucks. If it does, send the Marines to accompany the uh, IDF, and let's see what happens. To accompany the trucks, I mean, and let's see what happens. Yeah, again, folks, we're talking to Judge Andrew Napolitano. You can always go to JudgeNap.com or check out his podcast, Judging Freedom, especially if you want to do a deep dive. I'll just put out there to folks who find maybe some of your statements provocative, Judge. Go do the deep dive uh, because uh, there's a lot of insight you don't get from the regular news networks. And, and one thing I'm worried about is it plays into conversations we've had before about this culture of death. But people, you know, still alive saw death, especially in World War II, but... A report came out today that a man named Luke Hunter, he's the last survivor of the USS Arizona from Pearl Harbor. He has died at the age of 102. And my concern is we're losing uh, the last folks who really understand what total war is. Uh, most Americans, I don't think, other than there are a few who have served Iraq, Afghanistan, these sorts of things. But uh, the vast majority of Americans, I don't think, understand what war is actually like. Well... I hope that Americans don't have the experience of what war is actually like. But if you leave things up to uh, Netanyahu and, and Biden, uh, they may very well see that. I mean, right now, um, Ukraine is on its last legs. The French are considering sending troops in. I don't know what Joe Biden is considering. 
The Speaker of the House is considering some sort of a, a compromise, which will cost him his job. Uh, the $60 million, billion, even if it's enacted by Congress, uh, three quarters of it won't be there for a few years because it goes stays here, goes to the military industrial complex to build new equipment to replace the older stuff that we've already shipped out there. This is basically just a wealth transfer to the military industrial complex, unless you want to give Zelensky and his folks more money to steal. It's a it's a terrible state of affairs. It's a sinking ship. That's why Victoria Newland is gone. Uh, there's no way for Biden and company to pull a rabbit out of a hat. And when Ukraine um, acknowledges that it has collapsed, this will be a victory of Russia over NATO, something that Putin and his predecessors have only dreamed of. Yeah, what a strange time. I've been wondering. Uh, I've described the foreign policy establishment as uh, essentially guys wearing uh, wolf pelts, and they're not wolves they killed. It's wolves their fathers and grandfathers killed, and yet they still act like these big, bad warriors. I'm like, again, uh, the folks who actually had those fights are either um, already dead or very soon will be. And uh, again, another tough issue playing into this culture of death, uh, Jordan Peterson sounding the alarm. He says, mark my words, next we romanticize suicide. Then it becomes a contagion of death administered by the state. And he links to an article, I believe this is from Canada. The headline is, I'm 28 and I'm scheduled to die in May. <laughs> like, and is euthanasia even making it into the Western world, including the United States now? I think that physician assisted suicide is legal in Oregon. I'm not sure. But I know that in Canada, the government encourages it. This is what happens. Uh, when uh, you have a single payer, when you have the government paying uh, health care, the government would rather encourage this 28-year-old person uh, to commit suicide than pay for whatever quality of life. I don't know what the person's physical or mental condition is, but I, I know the mental condition of the uh, Canadian government is reprehensible. They would rather kill Canadians than pay for them to stay alive. Oh, and God forbid the free market should uh, address health care. That, that's not even... Uh, that's not even considered in, in Canada. What do the rich do in Canada? They drive to Detroit or Albany <laughs> All right. when they need health care. Well, and it's really, it reminds me of a song, one of the lines is some people want to die so they can be free. And uh, to me, that is like the opposite of freedom. That's you extinguish your freedom when you extinguish well, your life. In uh, guy on the USS Arizona that just died. If he goes to heaven, I don't think he'll see FDR. But if somewhere along the path, maybe he'll see him and say, you killed my buddies. You knew the Japanese were coming. You manipulated them into that because you wanted to help your third cousin, Winston Churchill, fight the Germans in Europe. 2,700 of us were sitting ducks in those boats, Mr. President. It's about time somebody pointed that out to you. Now, um... I, I want to go to a more general question, and I'm trying, by the way, to stay away from like a Trump legal update because we'll probably do that plenty of times in the future right, here right. the rest of this year. I mean, but, you're doing me a favor because my 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 days and nights at Newsmax are on that topic. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, general question, because I keep seeing this pop up. It's well known that most of the litigation uh, in this country comes out of fights over what public schools teach or, or any situation where kids are involved. When you think about natural law and how that should apply to the law we have today, what what does it tell us about the question of children? Uh, and I can give a basic example like, you know, banning children from being able to get tattoos or Governor DeSantis and the Florida legislature just passed a law where kids under 14 cannot be on social media whatsoever. Uh, how much restriction should we be placing on children before, say, the age of majority? Should be up to the parents, not up to the state. I mean, the reason the, the state is moving in, two reasons. One, the state always grows. Just its nature uh, is to grow. Unless you cut it down to size or elect Thomas Massey's or Ron Paul's to run it, it's always going to grow. The other reason is parents are, um, are happy to give away their responsibilities. Uh, when Mark Zuckerberg got beaten up by uh, one of the House committees uh, recently and turned around and apologized to all the parents who were there who held up pictures of their children who committed suicide allegedly because of bullying uh, on Facebook, 
Is that Mark Zuckerberg's fault that those kids were watching Facebook? Or is it the fault of the parents who can't, don't, or won't control what their kids watch? Do you really want to trust the government to raise children? The government can't balance a budget, can't fill potholes, can't stop robocalls, can't stop funding wars. You want the government to raise children? Man, people are crazy. They, they really are. And uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see. And I often suspect sometimes the restrictions you put on children and, and some to me make common, common sense that I think a lot of parents would agree on uh, voluntarily. But uh, often it seems the restrictions they first place on children, that's coming for adults later. Uh, it seems to work out that way, that going and protecting the children sometimes become a euphemism for more control of the entire population. Well, um, the government likes to expand. I mean, Jefferson uh, predicted this in one of his last letters to John Adams on the long march of history. Government grows uh, and liberty shrinks. Now, liberty ebbs, ebbs and flows. You could argue there's a lot more liberty today than there was in government's time, but you cannot dispute that there's a hell of a lot more government and the framers wouldn't recognize the government that we have. They gave us a government that needed our permission to do anything. Today, we have a government from which we must get permission to do everything. That's an inversion, an inversion of what Madison and Jefferson gave us. Now, a final, I'll let you get out of here after this one. Uh, there was an interesting moment on, I guess, Easter Sunday on Meet the Press, where they had an Episcopal bishop, a woman named Marion Buttle, or Marion Boot, excuse me, and then Wilton Cardinal Gregory. And Cardinal Gregory, in a very polite way, was sort of saying Joe Biden is a cafeteria Catholic, especially on the issue of abortion. What I want your reaction from is this Episcopal priestess, for lack of a better word, was saying all these rebuttals to kind of defend Biden. And on one point, she goes, well, you know, sometimes there's a distinction between what the government policy needs to be and what Biden's own private morals are. And to quote Aquinas, you have to follow your own conscience. Is, is that message from Aquinas really a blank check to kind of do whatever you please and pick and choose? Oh, OK, what what actually she was quoting a, a John Henry Cardinal Newman, but I'm not, I, I don't know what <laughs> she read or not, I don't want to get too nitpicky with her. Right. Uh, there is much Catholic teaching on conscience, but it assumes that you have a properly educated and formed conscience. If your conscience tells you it's OK to kill babies, it is not OK to follow that conscience, period. There is no justification for that in Aquinas, Newman, Augustine, uh, Aristotle, well, I don't know about Aristotle, but in any of the uh, traditional uh, Catholic uh, uh, teachings. I was surprised to hear Cardinal Gregory say that. He's on the liberal uh, side of things, uh, but happy uh, to hear him say it. I mean, a cafeteria a Catholic is really not a Catholic at all, unless he goes to confession all the time, in which case he has to have the firm purpose of amendment each time he leaves confession, I don't want to get too into theology or canon law here, uh, but J Joe Biden as a Catholic is pretty much of a farce, and I commend Cardinal Gregory for calling him out on it. Well, and uh, I always appreciate your time today and, and whenever you call him out on it, too, as well. That's why I had to ask you about it. Uh, what do you have coming up? Who do you have coming up today on uh, Judging Freedom? You know, this morning I had Dennis Kucinich on, Congressman Kucinich, who's running for his old seat in Ohio. Wow. Is as feisty and fiery against war, against spying, against big government as he ever was uh, in the old days. He talked about uh, sitting there alone on the floor of the of the house with Ron Paul, just the two of them. The Democrats hated Kucinich, the Republicans hated Paul and they didn't give a damn and voted and said what they thought was the right thing according to their consciences informed by uh, the Constitution. Uh, I also have uh, Matt Ho, Karen Kwiatkowski, and Aaron Mate, my Tuesday uh, regulars. But Kucinich was as fiery, <laughs> fiery as can be, accusing Joe Biden of uh, genocide. Well, and I, I'd love to hear that. Uh, well, and I thought it, he was helping it's, RFK it's, out. It's posted. In fact, we actually posted okay. a mini clip uh, under videos. So if you don't want to watch the entire, you don't have the time to watch the entire 30-minute interview, 
you can watch the most incendiary minute and a half. <laughs> but I, I don't care what side they come from. I love gadflies who stick by uh, their priors. But I, I appreciate you. appreciate your time as always, Judge. Oh. Until next week. Okay, you got it, Joey. All the best. Thank you. Yeah, all the best. Again, folks, that's Judge Andrew Napolitano. Always appreciate his time. This part of the program brought to you by James Cole and Cole Plumbing. And they're at Cole Plumbing. Well, James and his team are ready to help you with all of your plumbing needs. It could be basic things like, uh, well, a clogged drain or low water pressure, or it could be um, a bigger deal, like a burst pipe. Now, if you have a full burst pipe, you probably already have drywall problems. But say it's a, a, a pipe that's leaking pretty fiercely, and you just noticed, okay, the ceiling's starting to sag and get soggy, or the floor's completely soaked at this point. Well, Cold Plumbing has this proprietary pipelining technology that allows them with minimal discomfort to you and your home to get in there and solve the problem with precision and expertise. That means they're not going to tear out a bunch of drywall or dig up a huge hole in your yard. Maybe you don't really have an emergency problem or much of a problem at all other than you want to upgrade, say, to a tankless water heater system. Or maybe you're getting up there in age, your knees aren't as good as your hips, none of it's working how it used to. Maybe install a taller toilet, or it could be you want to get real fancy, install a bidet or a Japanese toilet or something. Cold Plumbing can help you with all of that. So call them up today, 279-8919. That's 279-8919. And just remember, folks, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. More news and views in the afternoon after this. Want to carry news talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hi there, I'm Kim Williams with Alabama Home Mortgage. For years, I've been asking you to call me at Alabama Home Mortgage because there is a difference in mortgage companies. Did you know the current national average turn time to close on a mortgage is 48 business days, but not at Alabama Home Mortgage? At Alabama Home Mortgage, our average close time is 16 business days. That's a month faster than the rest. How do we do it? With over 60 years of combined experience in the industry, our team knows mortgages. Our years of experience yield a better experience for our customers. Folks, time is money. Whether you're looking to buy or refi, don't waste time with another mortgage company, bank, or credit union. We close on time every time. Give Alabama Home Mortgage a call at 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or visit us online at myalabamahomemortgage.com to complete an application on your time. Our fast turn time is just one difference that sets us apart from the rest. It's not just a slogan. Call Alabama Home Mortgage because there is a difference in mortgage companies. NMLS 1586 Equal Housing Lender. Make 2024 the year you break away from the chain stores and join us here at Adams Drugs. We value your business and want to provide you the best customer service at the lowest possible price. We've been serving up excellent customer service here in the River Region for over 62 years. I made the swap to Adams Drugs and I couldn't be happier. Having the job and then getting three kids to all of their activities keeps me busy. I don't have an hour to waste waiting on a prescription. At Adams, they know me and my family. I get in and out in minutes, and when I can't get by Adams, they'll bring the prescription right to my door. What are you waiting for? Come in to Adams Drugs and let us earn your business. Our friendly and personal staff will talk with you and answer any questions you may have about your prescriptions. Your satisfaction is our number one goal. Visit us at adamsdrugs.net for the location nearest to you. Adams Drugs is your local independent Health Mart pharmacy. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company. Run by Alabamians for Alabamians, 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. News and talk without the static. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Eddie Bader has the day off. 
A lot of people noticing I'm wearing a button-up shirt and I, I did my hair somewhat. Um, just felt like it, gentlemen. Just felt like it. No particular reason. Let's go to Joe on line one. Hey, Joe, how are you today? Yes, uh, concerning something you and the judge were talking about a minute ago, how the the government is propagandizing and controlling the youth mm -hmm. and destroying family control. Uh, just be mindful of what Hitler did with the Hitler youth. Mm. That was yeah. designed. Well, in every so, totalitarian in history, I think going even all the way back to Plato, says you have to break that relationship or else you're not going to be yeah. able to make people equal or do whatever it is you're trying to do. And then give them the speech they wanted to learn. Propagandize them. Exactly. But Hitler did that. He did it beautifully. He knew he, he, what he was coming ahead and he was well, anyway. Well, know, those videos from you know, all the documentaries now available, they're just uh, they're blood curdling. They're horrifying to see young kids uh, and and really, they would turn young children against their parents. The communists would do the same thing. I remember one story where a kid like threw a knife right into the chair of an arm where his mother was sitting in because she wasn't being a good enough, say, Nazi. And it's stuff like that where you go, wow, that's evil. Um, I hope this nation doesn't push us to that. Well, our government's changing. We need to really get in there and kind of take a look at what's going on. Oh, amen. Well, uh, I appreciate the call, Joe. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Two seven two nine two two eight. That's two seven two nine two two eight. Well, it is official now. Trump has secured his hundred and seventy-five million dollar bond using a brokerage account. So that's pretty much settled. Though on another case is gag order. I think this is the so-called hush money case. Such a farce, in my humble opinion. But the gag order has been expanded there people getting very upset that trump's talking about the judge's daughter when she's a full-grown woman who's a political activist who's criticized him so yeah it's fair game absolutely fair game you know, and one thing that i'm, I'm getting quite uh, annoyed with is again people trying to hide behind the idea that well we have just the facts on our side and y'all are just wrong but they keep conflating their opinion or their interpretation of the facts as the facts and that's what's so daggum frustrating in this day and age. And it's been frustrating for a long, long time. You can string together a lot of different facts that are literally true, but you can do so in a way that's incredibly misleading. Everything we do as human beings is usually strung together as some sort of story or narrative. Now, when you engage in, say, science, you should have means and methods of trying to be as dispassionate as possible. By the way, they fail often, especially in, say, some of the softer sciences. But it, you should be, you know, able to rely on certain methodology that allows you to be somewhat objective. But when you get to politics in particular, that I don't even want to call it a soft science, even though I have a degree in, in poli-sci. I would rather say it's more a matter of storytelling. That's what the usual fight in politics is all about. Again, going back to Plato, the whole idea of the so-called noble lie or the uh, functional myth or whatever you want to call it, that the population can't take the truth and nothing but the truth. They must require a myth. Unfortunately, well, or just how it is, we are mythical creatures. A lot of our minds are oriented by the stories we were taught as children, by the stories that we reinforce to our children, by the stories we share all the live long day. And instead of accepting that reality, there is a lot of play in the joints, especially with a hot-button political issue that just happened. Instead of admitting, well, we've got to come up with the right idea that puts us in the right context and story, we're just going to brand whatever we don't like as not true and false, and whatever we say, the story we tell, is the absolute truth no matter what. And when it comes to political fights, I think that's just nonsense. When it comes to political freedom, the reason man needs political liberty is because, try as he might, even people of good faith, we're not always going to agree on our principles, on our first principles, on our priors. So we need the liberty to try to persuade one another either way. But that's not the game that's being played today. You have a bunch of folks who aren't trying to persuade, they're trying to bully and manipulate. 
That is the political game. Politicos do not use language as a means to communicate. They use it as a means to manipulate. And they do it all the live long day. The reason I'm thinking of this, and I won't play the long Ben Shapiro, Megyn Kelly clip, but they played a meet the press moment where Kristen Welker was saying, well, Trump keeps claiming these court cases, whether you're talking the property case or the hush money, stormy horseface Daniels, that case, any of these cases, Trump is saying this is election interference. And Kristen Welker said, well, that's obviously false. He keeps falsely claiming this is election interference. And that's just such a ham-handed tactic right there, Mrs. Welker, or Miss Welker. Don't know if you're married. Doesn't matter. It's not false. It's obvious. But they don't want you to believe your own lying eyes, right? Can't hide your lion eyes. It just so happened that all these court cases are happening right now. Even though the documents thing is, you know, pretty, they could have done that quicker, but you know, that's going to run up into the end of the summer. The property case, oh, well, we just came up with that. This hush money case goes all the way back to like 2015, 2016. The Georgia case. How is it that all these cases from different jurisdictions having to deal with different issues are all happening right during the election? It's almost like there are informal networks of very powerful, clever people that abuse the official system. And then they hide behind the official facts as presented by the Ministry of Truth that we call the corporate press here on this show. Got to learn to see through it, folks. And the beautiful thing is a lot of y'all are beginning slowly but surely to see through it. What will that lead to? Well, I don't know. I ain't God. But I think that is the beginning of a new beginning. When people start seeing through these old institutions, these failing institutions, that are only becoming more shrill by the day. Now, as I mentioned to the judge, I just want to read this in more detail. It's from uh, Fox News. And it says, Luke Hunter is the last living Pearl Harbor survivor who was aboard the USS Arizona when it exploded and sank. He died Monday at 102 years old. Conter, who was a quartermaster on December 7th, 1941, was on the ship's main deck when Japanese planes flew overhead and began their assault on the Hawaii naval base. Conter's illustrious career would continue long after Pearl Harbor. A trained pilot and member of the quote-unquote Black Cat Squadron, Contra was also the Navy's first survival, evasion, resistance, and escape officer. He retired in 1967. Passed away in his home in Grass Valley, California, following congestive heart failure, or he was 102, so it was probably his time. But I do worry. I keep bringing up these stories over the years because we're losing more and more folks who really understand the horror of war as they braved it because they had to, even if the political authorities around them, maybe, maybe it wasn't as inevitable as they made us all believe. In 2019, when Contra was 98, he said he liked going to remember those who lost their lives. He became a fixture at annual remembrance ceremonies in Pearl Harbor that the Navy and the National Park Service jointly hosted on anniversaries of the 1941 attack. When he lacked the strength to attend in person, he recorded video messages for those who gathered and watched remotely. It's always good to come back and pay respect to them and give them the top honors that they deserve, he said. Though many treated the sinking or shrinking group, excuse me, shrinking group of Pearl Harbor survivors as heroes, Contour actually refused the label. The 2,403 men that died are the heroes, and we've got to honor them ahead of everybody else. And I've said that every time, and I think it should be stressed. That is the ultimate sacrifice, folks. Let's not flirt with more sacrifices of that like unnecessarily. Yep, the folks running the show seem fairly cavalier about it. Let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Red Top. Hey, buddy. How you doing, Red Top? 
excellent. And of course, uh, as usual, Judge Knapp is very enlightening. Um, and I uh, want to shout out two of your uh, sponsors, XI Repair. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, they love seeing me, Joey, because all I do is go in and get a, a dupli- duplication of a flash drive, and it's the easiest thing they do all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you. But who's the young black girl? Uh, kind of light skinned in there. She's so nice and so good. Well, there are a few. There are a few young black yeah. girls there. And so she smiles when I come in because you know it's gonna take her thirty seconds to to do her job, and ain't gonna be nothing to it. <laughs> and hey, man, uh, folks, I'm going to Atlanta for Ooh. music. Really? Man, I got I got good response in Atlanta. Not to mention all the member previous members of Bosch live in Atlanta. Um, the drummers in a three tribute band and I'm going up to play music in Atlanta because I really got snubbed here to tell you the truth. Uh, and that's the same thing that happened to Tommy Shaw. Now let me give a, another shout out to a sponsor of yours, Joey. Okay. Um, I'm in, here at the house today fixing, you know what? Turn my damage. All hmm. I got to say you could call Pest Pro, or you could call me, but you go call one of them. <laughs> you better call Pest Pro first. Roll top, go Trump. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it, Red Top. Again, 334-272-9228 if you want to hop in on the program. This part of News and Views brought to you by Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. And there, the Goodson Group, Bo and his team are ready to help you out, whether you're looking to buy or sell here in the Montgomery or surrounding areas. Bo has been working in the River Region real estate market for over four decades, 40-plus years under his belt. And there at the Goodson Group, not only can they help you with buying and selling your property, but they have management services available should you want to rent out your home, which is a great idea here in the River Region area, but uh, it can be a pain, pain in the neck, so to speak, uh, to manage a property yourself, especially if you've never done it before. But for a reasonable fee, the Goodson Group can do that for you. They'll even find you tenants. And the Goodson Group is also the home of the Bogutson Real Estate School, probably the crown jewel there, one of the most highly acclaimed real estate programs in Alabama, because, well, you're learning from Bo's 40-plus years of experience. He's been through it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's a very interactive course, also very reasonably priced, meets every Thursday night, I believe. And the proof is all the folks who have gone on, proof of how good they are is all the folks who have gone on to great success after going through Bo Goodson's real estate school, whether it's fully licensed realtors or as more knowledgeable private players. So check out the Goodson Group today. You can always go to thegoodsongroup.com or give them a call at 551-0225. That's 551-0225. Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. Great sponsor here on the program. Let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Hey, this is Penny. Hey, Penny. Great to hear from you. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Okay, what I don't understand, well, I left the, I was waiting for you to say um, bullying, and when I heard you say bullying about what they're doing, I was like, yes, Joey, that's correct. That is what they are. They're just all the bullies in the world. Yep. And, I mean, it's so obvious to see you're going to wait and hold all these freaking cases at one freaking time when they all have different freaking dates of origin and inception. Really? How convenient. But somehow we let Biden's son, Hunter's little uh, tax evasion, we let that time run out where you can't punish him for it. Well, oh, that's just convenient. We're going to let that rent, that time run out. And this is what I don't understand. How in the heck is, how can we not convict Biden for treason? Because he's using U.S. dollars to fly in illegals. And we have a, I mean, I don't understand where he's getting, how's he getting appropriation of those funds? He's having to misuse funds because no one ever appropriated money to, 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 fly in freaking illegal it's because half the congress more than half the congress agrees with them and also a lot of the ministry of truth and the corporate press agree with them so they're not going to give them a hard time about it other than maybe fox news it's so ridiculous i just i mean he's clearly trying to overturn our democracy in our country because he wants a whole new uh voting base by bringing so many illegals that they're outnumber us, what he's trying to do. 
Now, did you hear uh, well, an unusual source, but he is, you know, a competitor, even as much as the Democrats don't want this guy to be a competitor to Joe Biden. But uh, did you hear RFK Jr. on CNN just giving it to Biden good? No, I did not. I think I missed that. Well, here, uh, I think it's a short clip. Uh, hold on the line here and uh, I'll play this. This is, okay. again, uh, RFK Jr. on with uh, Aaron Burnett there on CNN. But do you really believe okay. that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is, is, is an equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents for political reasons. He's weaponizing the federal agencies. Those are really critical threats Donald to Trump, of course. Yeah, well, Donald Trump, though, Donald Trump, but that... Wow, folks, if we're going to be uh, assessing this upcoming year, you have to include RFK Jr. in this conversation. It's wow. Absolutely. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm actually surprised uh, to hear all that from him, but uh, maybe he does have some integrity, even though he's a Democrat, and I'm going to give him kudos for that. Because you know what? If there's a black cat in the room, call out every black cat. I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat. Let's call them all out. And uh, clearly, you know, Biden's in his party ring, but um, he, he has the backbone to say something about it. And he's right. I mean, what Biden has done, his little mafia ring, it, it, it's almost like a third world that we I see us going to. I don't see us having a United States of America. I see it's going to be a divided one in order for the Republicans to survive because they're just going to keep on – well, they're going to keep on cheating for votes, first off, and they're just going to keep on bringing more people in to have them vote to outnumber us. Well, and we'll and, see how it shakes up, but it, it doesn't look pretty right now, And uh, but maybe that's what we got to go through, sort of birth pangs of something new. Yeah, I, evidently so. Love the show, Joey. Have a good one. Thank you, Penny. Again, uh, 334-272-9228 if you want to hop in on the program. This part of the program brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And there at Montgomery Men's Health, well, two things can happen as we get older, fellas. One is low testosterone, which can cause a lot of general problems. And there are a lot of guys walking around who don't know they have low T. Or it could be something more specific. Maybe low T is contributing to it, but uh, erectile dysfunction or just problems in the bedroom. And I know guys hate going to the doctor, but Montgomery Men's Health was created to take care of fellas just like us. This is not any of these issues, something to put off, be ashamed about. Don't deny it. Don't be embarrassed. And there are actually studies that show that men these days will be more irritable and argumentative on purpose before bed just to avoid failing at intimacy. So if you're lacking motivation, energy, drive, including a decrease in your sex drive, seeing unwanted weight gain and loss of muscle mass, maybe you feel like you're just walking through life in a fog, knowing whether you have low T is huge in combating some of these issues. And the providers there at Montgomery Men's Health will conduct a testosterone-focused lab workup, plus a consultation for only $99. And Montgomery Men's Health has low T treatments that can truly change lives. Men can experience higher energy, better gains in the gym, or other better mental clarity, improved sleep patterns, a faster metabolism you usually even notice, and increased libido. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You can actually book the same day that you call. So, guys, it's time to feel amazing and hit your goals this year. That number, 440-3663. That's 440-3663. Or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com to book your appointment today. He may not know whether he's coming or going. 
But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Have you ever considered turning your home into a rental and build wealth at the same time? People throughout the River Region are doing that right now. By investing wisely in the right property or turning your current home into a rental, is the secret. Hiring a property manager to professionally manage your property is the way to prosperity. Our company does all of the advertising, personally showing prospective tenants, does a thorough background check and credit report before moving forward. Over 15 critical services are provided to our clients in protecting the asset, but also providing the best residence in your home possible. Collecting rent on time and frequent inspections help landlords feel better about renting their house and to provide clean, well-kept homes that anybody would be proud to call home. For a complete list of property management services, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group at 221-2883 or 551-0225. The Rich Thomas Weather Network, brought to you by Montgomery Paint and Body. From a little fender bender to total body repair, MPB will fix it good as new, maybe better. For over 35 years, the Turner family has been getting you back on the road. Call 279-7325. Hi, everybody. This is Rich Thomas. We definitely want everybody to stay weather aware, especially as we go into the evening and nighttime hours tonight with an increasing severe weather threat across the area, including all modes of severe weather and tornadoes are possible. Showers and thunderstorms likely this evening and tonight as a line of storms swoops across the area. Our free weather app will keep you on top of the action with instant push notifications. Go to the App Store, search Rich Thomas Weather. Windy tonight, low 56, and tomorrow, much cooler. A brisk day with highs only in the 60s, and gusty winds will make it seem cooler. Maybe some upper 30s by Thursday and Friday night. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. This is your roving reporter, and today I am talking with an elk. Uh, hey man. Mr. Elk, I was just wondering, what do elk do to take care of their money? Well, like most smart folks, we call David Erdis. You mean Alabama's most favorite asset preservationist? That's Tim, man. We call him up at 334-279-7431 or... 205-479-0839. I see. Yes, he is our preferred money man. The money man with the money plan. Uh, you've been paying attention. Well, could you give us those numbers one more time? 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And I just want to try to give you a heads up, man. Oh, what's that? I'm uh, not an elk. Not an elk, huh? Well, then, pray tell, what are you? Ah, uh, Knights of Columbus. I am not even going to make a comment. Uh, well, the baby liked it. Hustler Turf Commercial Mowers are built tough to work hard. Whether you need a fleet of mowers or a one-man show, you don't have time for downtime. Hustler Mowers are over-engineered, overbuilt, and tested well beyond what is required. With the most complete lineup in the industry, including exclusives like a 104-inch Super 104 and 88-inch stand-on and industry-leading warranties. Hustler Mowers are ready to handle what you have to throw at them to build your fleet to be reliable and versatile with Hustler Turf. Find your next Hustler Turf at Deesful Ace Hardware, U.S. 31 North, just north of the Pine Level exit. This is Jonathan with Oswalt's Apparel and Footwear in Prattville. With all that's changed in the last decade, I really thought that radio advertising was dead, but I was wrong. We opened our store during the pandemic, and we wouldn't have been near successful without advertising on Blue Water. Practically every day someone comes in for the first time and tells us they heard about Oswalt's on the radio. I highly recommend advertising with Blue Water. Radio reaches over 90% of everyone in the River Region. Shouldn't your ads be out there where your customers are? Call us to find out more. Blue Water Broadcasting. Local folks helping local business. The River Region's first and only news talk station on FM. Live local talk. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. This is how you conduct yourself in a democracy. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. 
or as we're calling the show online, Joey Clark Live. You can always go to Joey Clark Live on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. Join the comment section. The peanut gallery is a lot of fun to kick things around with. They usually like to make comments on my fashion choices and how fat I've become. It's a lot of fun. Or you can also, of course, watch the show on the X platform on Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, and uh, getting a lot of love there these days. Now, I want to turn to, um, well, an example of an old, old dog. I almost want to call this old dog a vampire. But vampires usually keep that youthful look from all their blood sucking, right? So what would be something that sucks blood but still looks old? Like an old, old dog. You know, one that can't control its bowels. I'm not sure. But these old dogs of the political class would like you, these bloodsuckers, maybe leeches, would like you to say, no, 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 don't pay attention to any of the third party people, especially don't pay attention to RFK Jr. He's saying things we don't approve of. It has to be a binary choice between people we select before you even are allowed to elect them. Of course, I'm talking about, well, this woman, <clears throat> whoa, man, on Jimmy Fallon. Let's listen in together. Everybody talk, yeah. I mean, it's it's Biden versus Trump. Uh, yes, we know that. It what, is. Uh, it is. What do, you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Right? And, yeah, and good. you know. You stupid seals clapping for that. Hey, Hillary, how about you get over yourself? All you in the political class. Well, this is just how it works. Yeah, we're tired of how it works. Tired of it. The beautiful thing is we do have more options this year. But let's just keep it to a stupid binary choice so we can play Team A or Team B. Let's keep it simple for the dumb that we rely on to elect our asses. You know, there's such a thing as signing a contract under duress, or you've been defrauded as you make an agreement with somebody. And they do it all the time after, of course, they suck your blood. But listen to her. She pretends that we're still in a world where it's only NBC on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And yeah, there are some folks who are still corralled in that pig pen of thought. But millions are now changing their minds. A lot of young folks in particular, but listen to her, how she get over yourselves. That's just how it is. Duh. It's kind of like one is old and effective and compassionate, Ugh. has a heart and really cares about people. Yeah. And one is old, old. and has been mm. charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, um, okay. It's a... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I understand why this is even a hard choice yeah that's why you lost it wasn't because putin and the russians it wasn't because of james comey and the fbi you lost because you're an ass hat an elitist bloodsucker that doesn't have a damn in your body for everyday people who are tired of that sort of mentality 91 felonies well, and my advice is, hey, Democrats, you want to keep losing or you want to lose this one? Keep trotting Hillary Clinton out there so she can piss off all the Trump voters and the RFK Jr. faithful at the same time. How out of touch. Yeah, there's some folks like she hung the sun and the moon and she lassoed the moon for me, too, because Hillary Clinton, I love her so much. Really, I yeah. don't understand it, yeah. but we have to go through yeah, the of course election, you don't. and hopefully people will realize what's at stake, because yeah, yeah. it's an existential right. uh, mm -hmm. question. Yeah. I, what kind of mm -hmm. country we're going to have, what kind of democracy sure, we're going right, to have, and right. people who blow that off are not paying attention, because it's not like... Trump, his enablers, his empowerers, his allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what kind of country they want. Yeah. Yeah. So. Get out there and vote. Get out there vote, and vote. Which is a good well, that's what this is really about. 
get out there and vote and make your choice, but it better be the right one after we limit your choices into essentially a benign nothingness. Blood sucking. Hey, this part of the program brought to you by uh, Josh and Leslie Ryder there at Dylan Rings. And of course, at Dylan Rings, they are a full service jewelry shop over there. Really do love the brand new showroom, folks. You got to get by 119 Brown Springs Road. They just did major renovations. The place looks fantastic. Uh, brand new counters, brand new floors. Like the place looks brand new. Really great work there. And, you know, if you're an April baby, it's your time to shine. Did you know that the diamond is your dazzling birthstone? If you're an April baby, the diamond is your birthstone. So whether you're a traditionalist or love to stand out, Dylan Rings has the perfect diamond pendant for you. From timeless antique designs to quirky one-of-a-kind pieces, their selection will make you sparkle like never before. Choose from one of these or others, like, and I'm looking actually at Facebook, uh, and go to Dylan Rings on Facebook, and you can see some samples. But this is just a sample. I'm looking at six different ones. They're absolutely beautiful. Some a little more traditional, some a little more quirky. Uh, but there's more than just six options there. So discover your perfect match and let your inner brilliant shine bright, April babies. Or maybe you're not an April baby and you just want a diamond pendant. Get by 119 Brown Springs Road there, and be sure to tell Josh and Leslie Ryder at Dylan Rings that Joey, that crazy man on the radio, sent you. I think coming up we'll have uh, Brylin Hollyhand in the next hour in person in studio. Look to, uh, forward to talking to Brylin. Got a new book coming out uh, I think you all might enjoy in the listening audience. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll have Caroline Dobson. I'm not sure if it's in studio over the phone in the 2 o'clock hour. But look forward to talking to Caroline Dobson, who is, of course, candidate for Congress in the brand new Alabama District 2. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. So that's our news. I'm John Scott. Ukrainian drones have attacked a major oil refinery and a drone factory in the province of Tartistan. Russian regional authorities say 12 people were injured in that attack. Heavy gunfire erupting in the downtown area of Haiti's capital as police battled gang members near the National Palace for several hours. Local media reporting that at least one policeman was shot on Monday. That's after he and other officers were forced to flee an armored car that was later set on fire. U.S. job openings barely changed in February, staying at historically high levels a sign that American job market remains strong. The Labor Department reports employers added 8.76 million job vacancies in February. Before 2021, they'd never topped 8 million. This is SRN News. Biden has started tracking Christians like cattle. Yes, you heard it right. He pressured banks to tag transactions for certain keywords. One of them is Holy Bible. That's a horrifying and creepy attack on our religious freedoms. It's made possible by a digital financial system that makes you a sitting duck. But you do have other options. I recommend a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. I'm Lance Wallnow, a news analyst, a best-selling author, and evangelical leader to people who cherish their financial independence. A precious metals IRA can help you avoid the scrutiny of Biden's anti-Christian bureaucracy while also preserving your retirement savings. To find out more, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and see how a gold IRA can help you. Text FAITH to 989898. There are no strings attached. So text FAITH to the number 989898 right now and take action to protect your own prosperity. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Hi, everybody. This is Rich Thomas. We definitely want everybody to stay weather aware, especially as we go into the evening and nighttime hours tonight with an increasing severe weather threat across the area, including all modes of severe weather, and tornadoes are possible. Showers and thunderstorms likely this evening and tonight as a line of storms swoops across the area. 
Our free weather app will keep you on top of the action with instant push notifications. Go to the App Store, search Rich Thomas Weather. Windy tonight, low 56, and tomorrow, much cooler. A brisk day with highs only in the 60s, and gusty winds will make it seem cooler. Maybe some upper 30s by Thursday and Friday night. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. Whether you're buying a home or auto or consolidating debt, CBNS Bank's personal loans get you where you need to go. Go to cbsbank.com to find a location near you or apply online today. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, these are today's top stories. Alabama lawmakers are back in the state house this week with legislation to legalize certain types of gambling on the agenda. The House is in favor of allowing sports betting in casinos, while the Senate got rid of sports betting and put limits on the number of casinos. Both chambers agree on a state lottery. Trillions of cicadas are about to emerge in numbers not seen in decades and possibly centuries. They stay buried year after year, only crawling out from underground every 13 or 17 years. Now, the rare cicada double dose is about to return. The last time two cicada broods came out together was in 1803. Governor Kay Ivey announced the state of Alabama saw a surge in investments last year with new and expanding companies bringing over $6.4 billion into the state. Montgomery County played a significant role, attracting $6.29 million, showcasing the state's growth and job creation efforts. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, I'm Sky Mosley. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. This is former Alabama Supreme Court Justice Glenn Murdoch. Alabama is a great place to live and work and raise our families because Alabamians are a good people of faith and traditional values but a huge gambling bill in Montgomery would change our culture forever. 10 massive casinos bringing more crime to our big cities and small towns, highly addictive cell phone betting, and the state selling the lie of lottery riches to the poor and most vulnerable. With all this wrong in the world, this is no time to give up on our traditional values in Alabama. Call and ask your Senator to be the leader you elected them to be to stand strong and vote no on gambling and keep Alabama a great place to live and work and raise our families. Thank you. Call your Senator at 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. Paid for by Eagle Forum, Alabama. The Tears family has been your local Roto-Rooter service since 1964. Drain cleaning, plumbing repair, and those troublesome septic tanks, no problem. Technology has changed a bit in the last 54 years. Video inspections of lines to locate problems is available, as well as scheduling your appointment online. River Region residents have trusted Roto-Rooter for over half a century. You can too. Call today at 272-7130 or visit online at rotorooteralabama.com. Call Roto-Rooter, that's the name, and legal troubles down the drain. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. What the hell are we doing here? We are behaving the way a superpower ought to be. Well, our behavior has produced some crappy results. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the... So you know the, you know the thing. Joey Clark. Welcome to the second hour news and views or as we're now calling it joey clark live you know folks a, a robber you know somebody robbed somebody a robber who justified his theft by saying that he really helped his victims by spending uh his spending giving a boost to say like retail trader to the larger economy would probably find few converts like i robbed you but i spent it in a way that helped the larger american economy 
But when this theory is clothed in, say, Keynesian equations or impressive references to the multiplier effect, it unfortunately carries more conviction. That's from Murray Rothbard. So allow me to begin this hour with uh, unpopular truth. You are not entitled to a job or a certain standard of living. Your needs do not give you a right to anyone else's life. To receive charity or an opportunity is one thing, but to regard one's needs as legitimate claims on the lives of others is to court tyranny and pervert justice. Though you are free to pursue a job or create your own opportunities, it is not the role of government in a free society to ensure your livelihood. Yet Americans seem to believe the opposite, trained for generations now to conjure up an endless list of deeds and grievances as the primrose path to power, agency, wealth, and liberation. Of course, of course, such a path is nothing but a blind alley towards destruction, one that only guarantees success to a privileged predatory elite like that bloodsucker Hillary Clinton. Don't get me started on Mitch McConnell. He's not going away until 2027! Government at its best is meant to protect against invasions of persons and property. Government at its worst always invades persons and property in the name of defending them. For every job provided or livelihood protected by the government, directly or indirectly, someone else must pay the price. There is no such thing as a free lunch. To protect the government must always prey upon some other subject. To provide, the government must always exploit some other guy. Indeed, when the collective need masquerades as a basis for justice, the government will be swift to brand individual liberty as the enemy of the people, rationalizing its predation in the name of provision and protection. But protection from what? It doesn't matter. Any need will do. Any perceived fright will suffice. Inequality, inefficiency, or instability. Take your pick. Once the government becomes the guarantor of jobs and the guardian of a certain standard of living, any justification, moral, scientific, or otherwise, will be authorized. Just look at American governments today, national, state, or municipal. As Joe Biden showcased years ago, that three-letter word, J-O-B-S, jobs, man, not a joke is a potent political issue used by Democrats and Republicans alike to court voters. The economy continues to be thoroughly politicized, as Frederick Bastiat's adage still applies. Government is the great fiction through which everybody endeavors to live at the expense of everybody else. Rather than looking at a given, say, inflation metric or quarterly jobs report with a sound economic eye, tracing the unseen factors and consequences of a given action, the political set, including Keynesian and monetarist court economists, view economic data points as symbolic flashpoints, a great series of fictions or as scientific experiments meant to be honed, engineered, and steered in order to stir the populace into this or that political action. A consumer price index report isn't just another data point. It's a chance to spin the political narrative in favor of one's preferred position while showing off one's latest clever equations that impress without ever proving much of anything. In his 2013 book, The Great Deformation, former congressman and Reagan Office of Management and Budget Director David Stockman reveals how the government's budget became an infernal jobs machine. Stockman writes, Once the old-time balanced budget rule was discarded and the federal budget was turned into a tool of economic stabilization, the fundamental process of fiscal governance was thrown out of kilter. Every spending program and every feature of the revenue code became a quote-unquote jobs program and a tool of counter-cyclical macro-management. The Keynesian framework transformed the budget into a type of macroeconomic plumbing system under which spending programs and tax expenditures became mere conduits through which to pump dollars into the economy. Such flows would compensate for the alleged shortfall of aggregate demand, according to the classical Keynesians, or spur underinvestment underinvested and incentive-deprived sectors of the economy, according to the business light Keynesians. In either case, politicians became immersed in log rolling among claimants for tax relief or spending increases to spur output in jobs. Meanwhile, their comprehension of the dollars and cents of budgeting was overwhelmed by a cavalcade of spurious economic justifications. In a process that was subtle, 
cumulative and inexorable. The federal budget was thereby captured by the forces of special interest lobbies and crony capitalism. Once the latter occupied the moral high ground and could argue that in raiding the treasury, they were actually serving the public good of more jobs and more growth, the frail fiscal defenses of popular democracy were easily demolished. Folks, as long as we Americans continue to court government robbers and their crony robber barons for our daily bread, believing their supposedly moral or scientific justifications, we will continue to eat away at our freedom and prosperity. In the name of satisfying our needs, we will never be satisfied. Now let's go to a concrete example. This is from the desk of Ron Paul. So the Senate calls out-of-control spending a national security threat. And yet, they keep spending anyway. Last month, the U.S. Senate passed a resolution saying that the over $34 trillion in growing national debt threatens national security. A few days later, a bipartisan majority of the Senate voted for $1.2 trillion in a spending bill. In addition to the usual increases in war and welfare spending, the bill funds gender transitioning for minors without parental consent and red flag laws, which allow law enforcement to seize an individual's firearms without due process. Before the passage of the latest spending bill, the Congressional Budget Office released a report predicting that the national debt would exceed the prior record of 106.4% of gross domestic product by 2028. Interest payments on the national debt are estimated to reach $870 billion this year, more than the government will spend on the military. The CBO estimates that unless Congress cuts spending, which is highly unlikely, by 2051, interest on the debt will exceed not just military spending, but spending on the two biggest items in the federal budget, Social Security and Medicare. As Eric Bohm of Reason Magazine points out, the CBO report understates how much federal spending will grow in the next several decades, since it cannot predict what crises future Congresses and presidents will exploit to ramp up federal spending. As he suggests, someone projecting 30 years ago how much government would spend in the future would not have included the increase in spending due to 9-11, the subsequent creation of the Homeland Security Industrial Complex, the forever wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, the housing meltdown, or the COVID lockdown. The hypothetical budget projection would also not have predicted legislation like the Medicare pres prescription drug benefit or Obamacare. The large and growing interest on the national debt puts pressure on the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates low. The Federal Reserve's rate increases, though relatively small, are one reason national debt payments rose by 32% last year. The need for the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates low will further erode the dollar's purchasing power, subjecting more Americans to the insidious inflation tax. It will eventually cause a loss of the dollar's world reserve currency status. This will result in a major economic meltdown that will likely lead to widespread civil unrest, the further growth of authoritarian movements on both the left and the right, and new restrictions on liberty. The only way out of this is for Congress to begin winding down the welfare warfare state. A good place to start is by cutting spending on militarism and foregoing interventionism. Savings from these cuts could be used to ensure those dependent on entitlement and welfare programs are not harmed as Congress winds down these programs. Responsibility for providing support for the truly needy should be returned to local and religious charitable institutions. Well, responsibility for education should be returned to local communities and parents. Congress should also pass legislation requiring any new spending to be offset by cuts in other federal spending and forbidding the Federal Reserve from purchasing federal debt instruments. These steps will be opposed by the special interests that benefit from the current system, but they are the only way to ensure the blessings of liberty and prosperity to our posterity. That's from the desk of Ron Paul. It's getting out of hand, folks. And I would like to think, say something like the, the military, something like the Pentagon. If you actually told the Pentagon and, say, the military contractors, we don't have as much money. We're not going to continue to balloon the debt to just pay y'all. So we need to prioritize here. And there's nothing like getting a cut in your, say, salary 
a cut in your budget that makes you start to actually prioritize. Too often right now, we don't have an actual priorities list. Like, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. We have, like, a wish list of 40, 50, 100 different, thousands of different things we want to spend money on. And it is leading to an irresponsible government that no matter who you choose, like Hillary Clinton says, get over yourself. That's the choice you have to make. But what choice is it? I can drink Pepsi or Coke all the live long day. Both are going to rot my teeth out. It's not a real choice. It's sort of the fake choice presented to us by the Ministry of Truth and the corporate press and all the wonderful public servants like Rodham, Clinton. And it's a farce that's leading us to ruin. You know, Mike Johnson is now floating a new deal. Ukraine uh, gets $60 billion in exchange for Biden ending his ban on liquid natural gas exports. I just, I, I don't understand at this point the rationale and the long game here when it comes to the fight between Russia and Ukraine. As I mentioned to Judge Napolitano, the Ukrainians used drones to hit Russia's third largest oil refinery, which prompted the White House to be quite angry with them. But U.S. equity futures are dipping lower as bond yields in the U.S. continue to move higher as crude continues to surge and is up another 2% on growing fears of Middle Eastern escalation after a senior Iranian commander was killed by an Israeli airstrike in Syria yesterday, with Iran immediately vowing revenge as well as Hezbollah vowing revenge. This is also as Ukraine once again struck oil infrastructure targets deep inside Russia, overnight hitting Russia's third largest refinery, 800-something miles approximately from the front lines. As oil price details, Ukrainian drones hit the primary refining unit of Russia's third largest refinery southeast of Moscow, more than 800 miles from the front line. This was on Tuesday, oh, early today. Ukraine keeps striking Russian oil assets despite the Biden administration's unequivocal demands for a hard stop, suggesting that diplomatic fallout is now imminent. Whew. So we're getting squeezed further and further and further. But it's all for the good, right? The good guys are going to win, right? Because we're moral means we're doing the right thing, right? Now, the United States has repeatedly urged Ukraine to halt its drone attacks on Russia's oil refineries due to Washington's assessment that the strikes could lead to Russian retaliation and push up global oil prices. According to a Reuters estimate, the amount of Russian oil refining capacity that has been taken offline due to Ukrainian drone strikes is 14% of Russia's total refining capacity. It's a heck of a lot to lose. So we'll see as the world's heating up. It, you know, it'd be one thing if we were like in a solid financial position as a nation. Not just financially, but like solid in terms of what we actually believe as a nation. It would be great if Americans actually trusted their institutions. And it would still be a hell of a challenge to see what's going on in the rest of the world. But we're a basket case at home, and it's leading to a basket case foreign policy and economic policy globally. As a rising world in the Southern Hemisphere... And in the East is starting to come more and more online. It's not a pretty time. But maybe, again, this is the birth pangs we have to go through for something new on the other side. Again, 334-272-9228. If you want to get in on the program, that's 334-272-9228. Now, back to the silly politicking that's going on. You know, James Carville just can't keep his mouth shut because I know too much, Joey. I just know too much about the Democratic Party in this country to keep my mouth shut. Well, in this clip, wearing some uh, snazzy LSU gear. Looks vintage, James. He is uh, going to lay out how well young voters are leaving the Democratic Party in droves. You know, I've been very vocal about this. Uh, it's It's horrifying. Our numbers among younger voters, our, 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 particularly 
black, younger blacks, younger Latinos or whatever, but whatever younger, I don't know, like younger people of color, particularly males. We're not shedding them. They're, they're leaving in the droves. We're not shedding them. They're leaving in droves. You know, Carville, I definitely have disagreements with the guy, but he does have a keen political mind. And he's seeing it. I think there is something to uh, what I've mentioned many times on the show. The true divide in this country, it, it, it hews to the political parties. So partisanship, I think, is the number one form of a petty bigotry in the country. You know, we could go into that. But aside from the partisanship, what is partisanship playing on in order to create a big divide? And honestly, I don't think it's race, especially when you look at the younger population. It's not race. It's not ethnicity. Um, it's not necessarily even economic class. Uh, it maybe has something to do with class, but that has to more do with class in terms of who has power and who doesn't. Not so much who has money and who doesn't, though those two, of course, overlap. But I maintain, and I'm not the only one, that the biggest divide in this country right now is men and women, in particular, single men and women. You're talking about an astounding separation there. Less and less people getting married, the divorce rate's even higher, and young men and young women just ain't talking to each other all that much anymore. And I guess I'm part of the problem, but I, you know, I keep to myself when it comes to anybody, honestly. I'll talk to a young lady if she wants to talk. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'm blue in the face. I'll talk. I'll try to be the solution, not be the problem, but we'll see. But that's, I think, going to shape this election the most. And if enough young people, whether black or Hispanic or anything else, are starting to see, well, the system is corrupt. As Carville said yesterday, Trump and RFK Jr. get the F it vote. People just want to say F it when it comes to this system. Yeah, that's right. And there's a growing population by the day who is tired of, say, the Hillary Clintons of the world or the Mitch McConnells of the world telling everybody to get over it. This is how practical politics work. This is how our system works. We pretend to give you a choice while we do what we want to do. Anyhow, 272-9228. If you want to hop in on the program, I believe uh, Brylin Hollyhan will be here any moment. Before he gets here, this part of the program brought to you by Alabama Home Mortgage. And they're at Alabama Home Mortgage, Kim Williams and her team. Well, they're ready to help you out whether you're looking to buy a home or if you're looking to refinance your home. Now, the economy's nuts. Like interest rates being high or whatnot, but you can't make your decision about buying a home just based on national headlines. In fact, not even state headlines. What you need to think about is your own economy, your own hearth and home, so to speak. And Alabama Home Mortgage can help you do just that. They'll sit down with you, Kim and Madeline both. They'll sit down with you, get to know you, your goals in buying a home, and they'll walk you through that home buying process from pre-approval all the way to closing day. And of course, with refinance deals, if you're stuck under a mountain of credit card debt or you want to reinvest in your family or your property, they can get you an amazing deal there at Alabama Home Mortgage, especially if you're a veteran, though. Uh, there are a lot of veterans walking around who don't know about the VA home loan programs. They have not taken advantage of these benefits they earn through their service. Well, if you're interested, if you're a veteran, call up Alabama Home Mortgage today, whether you're looking to buy or refi, that number 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or you can always visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. There is a difference in mortgage companies. Let Kim and Madeline prove that to you today. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Want to carry news talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Selling a home in the River Region in this market takes some planning and preparation to be successful. Here are some steps to take to get your home sold fast. Remember the five P's. Prepare the home. Fresh coat of paint inside and out and complete any repairs needed. 
professionally clean the home. A deep cleaning of floors, cabinets, windows, and blinds will leave a great impression for future buyers. Provide a home warranty for the buyer to give the buyer peace of mind after the closing. Provide a closing cost allowance for the buyer to help them be able to afford your home. Price your home to sell, not sit. A comparative market analysis from a local realtor will demonstrate what other properties have sold for in your neighborhood. Well-priced homes sell faster with less hassle. Houses are selling fast and sellers are getting top dollar. For all the answers, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group, 221-2883 or 551-0225. It's a fact. Guys hate going to the doctor. But when it comes to erectile dysfunction and low testosterone issues, men from all over Montgomery have been thrilled seeing the providers at Montgomery Men's Health. Men all the way up to 95 years old have jump-started their sex drive and energy levels. Lots of men suffer with ED for years, but now they're able to enjoy sex again. Tom from Montgomery said, Montgomery Men's Health has changed my life. I have been able to be intimate with my wife for the first time in five years. She thought this problem was because of her, but the pills never worked for me. I had given up until I went to the clinic and realized there were more options for erectile dysfunction. Now I'm happy and my wife is happy. A visit for only $99, and that includes all testing, including a PSA and testosterone test. Give the guys at the clinic a call at 334-440-3663. That's 334-440-3663. Or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com. Are you tired of the mainstream media's biased reporting? Do you want to stay informed on the news that really matters to you? Look no further than 1819 News. At 1819 News, we bring you the latest in Alabama news, politics, sports, culture, and more. We've assembled a team of journalists with Alabama values dedicated to the truth and the truth alone. Visit us at 1819news.com today. That's 1819news.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Honest News, Alabama Values. Now you can add the power of digital advertising to the number one reach of radio. Let Blue Water's 20 years of local advertising and marketing success show you how. Grow your business with a complete suite of digital solutions combined with the reach of the most listened to radio group in the River Region. Call us or go to BlueWaterBroadcasting.com to find out how we can increase your return on investment. Blue Water Broadcasting, local folks helping local business. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Call Prune Masters, the professional pruners with over 30 years of experience, and that's all they do. To find out how you can get your hedges professionally pruned, call 220-2200 for a free estimate. Prune Masters, 220-2200. Honey, did you call an electrician to put in that new bathroom outlet? No, I thought I'd just get Cousin Ray. He's not a real electrician. Oh, Ray's handy. He can do anything. Being handy and being an electrician are two different things. Electricity is complicated and potentially dangerous. Each year there are thousands of home fires caused by faulty wiring. You need an expert. To wear the Crosby Electric uniform, you have to undergo background checks, drug testing, continuing education, and rigorous safety training. When you need electrical work, or if you just like someone to assess your home for safety, call the experts at Crosby Electric. So, how about that nice outlet Ray installed in the bathroom? Do you think it's safe? It's fine. See, when I plug in my electric razor, it... Now the lights are out. I am not sleeping a wink until you get Crosby Electric out here. Don't take chances with electricity. Call the experts at Crosby Electric, 272-2085, or visit us at crosbyelectric.com. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. The Johnny Adams Law Firm, proud sponsor of the Rich Thomas Weather Network. You can't control the weather, but you can control your drive. Be aware of your surroundings in any weather. Be a defensive driver. Your family and friends will thank you. From the Johnny Adams Law Firm. Hi, everybody. This is Rich Thomas. We definitely want everybody to stay weather aware, especially as we go into the evening and nighttime hours tonight with an increasing severe weather threat across the area, including all modes of severe weather, and tornadoes are possible. 
Showers and thunderstorms likely this evening and tonight as a line of storms swoops across the area. Our free weather app will keep you on top of the action with instant push notifications. Go to the App Store, search Rich Thomas Weather. Windy tonight, low 56, and tomorrow, much cooler. A brisk day with highs only in the 60s, and gusty winds will make it seem cooler. Maybe some upper 30s by Thursday and Friday night. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. Web Bobo with Capital Tractor. The Z700 series is the star of Kubota's line of zero-turn mowers, and our special spring pricing makes it easier than ever to take one home today. Powering Alabama, Kubota and Capital Tractor, Montgomery, Brundage, and Greenville. Live, local talk, the River Region's most trusted voice for news and opinion. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. This is how you conduct yourself in a democracy. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Again, 272-9228 if you want to get in on the program. That's 272-9228. And, uh, well, I love that a new generation of folks is rising up. And one of the shining lights, and I'm not just picking them because I agree with him on a lot of policy. I think he really is a talented, rising young star, is Vivek Ramaswamy. He earned my vote in the primary, even though it was a foregone conclusion for Trump. Uh, he already endorsed Trump, but uh, he earned my humble little vote in the primary. And uh, here's a sample. We hadn't played a lot of Vivek lately because he's been a little quieter, but you know, rightfully so, you're not running for president anymore. But he was on my adopted godfather's program, Sean Hannity. I don't know if I should have done that with Sean. I don't know if I'm ready for that. But uh, here we have Vivek on with Hannity laying out, I think, a message resonating with a lot of people. Conservatives, Sean, to also level up, to rise up and say, we're not just going to say, this is who we're against, the Biden administration or the radical left. We have to see the problem for what it is, yes. But we also have to say, this is what we stand for. This is what an alternative looks like. And so if the left is preaching their message of race and gender and sexuality and climate, I think it's time for the conservative movement to say, we stand for the individual, family, nation, God. That beats race, gender, sexuality, and climate if we have the courage to actually stand for something. So that'd be my advice to Republicans this year is, yes, we are up against a machine. Yes, we're up against a dishonest opposition. But we can't fall into the trap of just playing whack-a-mole, just criticizing the other side, or dare I say it, we'll have the same results we've had in 2022 and before. If we want to win decisively, and I see Donald Trump taking steps in this direction, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we go in this direction too, we have to articulate what we stand for as conservatives, as Americans, stand for our sovereignty, stand for an alternative vision. And if we give the American people that, young or old, black or white, they're going to flock beyond behind our alternative vision. That's what we conservatives need to step up and do this year, and we have our work cut out for us. Again, Vivek Ramaswamy, and you can see why he went from being a no-name to, well, being a household name, even if you aren't voting for him. Pretty impressive work by Vivek. He probably would have been the uh, better uh, State of the Union response. Yeah, well, not necessarily for the Republican establishment, because there's some disagreements there. Uh, I think Vivek's 100% right that uh, it's not going to cut it just to talk about mourning in America. It is a dark time in this country right now. And it's going to take, I think, fresh legs, a uh, return to first principles, and in many ways, a rebuilding of our country on top of the actual values, principles, and well, structure of the United States Constitution. So I maintain we pay a lot of lip service to that Constitution. But do we actually follow it? No, I think it's something more like the Administrative Act passed in the 1940s, like 1946. That seems to rule the roost much more. Uh, the interagency process seems to rule the roost much more than the actual elected officials. Uh, have you ever seen those uh, committee hearings where the unelected bureaucrats, especially like a State Department person, is uh, acting like they're the boss, not the, say, senators or congressmen? Well, they're acting that way because they are the boss. Congressmen, senators, 
well, not as much senators, but congressmen come and go. But the bureaucrats are there for a lifetime often. And it's time that we in the United States will say, hey, we actually want a government of by and for the people, not an uh, unaccountable elite that's creating a bunch of bad outcomes and impoverishing us in ways more than just financially. Now, a great message I, I ran across uh, that I think was shared initially by James Lindsay, but it's a clip of Jordan Peterson. And Peterson, well, he shares an incredibly important message. You know, on the show, we've been talking more and more what it means to be Christian. And, you know, Peterson is one who's created, I think, a resurgence of especially young people uh, who have been lost and kind of lost to the world and to the traditions they were supposed to inherit. And I guess there are a lot of complicated reasons for why there's been this loss. But Peterson has seemingly reinvigorated a lot of folks, some who fell into agnosticism, atheism, some who still believe but kind of fell away from organized religion and, and getting together with folks, people whose family structure was broken, uh, people that go through, say, a, a crucible like drug addiction or alcoholism. And so Peterson often will refer to uh, the Bible. Now, a lot of his lectures that are most popular have to be on the, or often on the Old Testament. And I believe he's got a new book coming out on the book of Exodus, a sort of uh, commentary and meditation on the book of Exodus. So this particular clip is, say, a commentary or meditation on the third commandment. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. And I think Peterson, well, actually gets the point. It's one I've been trying to make for quite a while, but uh, I think he nails it here. Let's listen in together. So the third commandment, depends on how you count them, but the third commandment is generally held to indicate something like, do not use God's name in vain. And people think that means don't swear, and it kind of means that in some trivial way. But mostly what it means is, do not claim divine motivation for self-serving behavior. And that's what all the protesters are doing. We're so compassionate in public. It's like, no, I don't think so. I think you're narcissistic psychopaths, fundamentally. And if you're not, well, at that moment, you're certainly possessed by that spirit. Look at how good we are. That's why Christ says in the Gospels not to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. If you're going to be good, do it in secret. Why? So you don't. So you don't fall prey to the temptation to make your good subordinate to your pride. Right? That's what the bloody Oedipal mothers do all the time. Mm -hmm. Look how much I love my son. Yeah. He doesn't even have a penis anymore. We <laughs> solved that wow. problem for him. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's so bloody. It's so brutal. It's so dark. It's, it's virtually unimaginable. Man, well said. How much do we do in the name of what's right in the name of God that is, in fact, just an excuse or an exercise in vanity? Hey, folks, we're going to hit a quick break, and I, I believe uh, Brylon is here, so we'll be right back. He may not know whether he's coming or going, but whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. This is former Alabama Supreme Court Justice Glenn Murdoch. Alabama is a great place to live and work and raise our families because Alabamians are a good people of faith and traditional values. But a huge gambling bill in Montgomery would change our culture forever. Ten massive casinos bringing more crime to our big cities and small towns, highly addictive cell phone betting, and the state selling the lie of lottery riches to the poor and most vulnerable. With all this wrong in the world, this is no time to give up on our traditional values in Alabama. Call and ask your senator to be the leader you elected them to be. To stand strong and vote no on gambling and keep Alabama a great place to live and work and raise our families. Thank you. Call your senator at 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. Paid for by Eagle Forum, Alabama. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368. 
an equal housing lender. The River Region's News Talk Station. News Talk 93.1 WACV. News Talk 93.1. Welcome back. We call it on the airwaves here, news and views, but we're changing it over to Joey Clark live slowly, but surely. And uh, our next guest, as promised, uh, we have him in the studio here. His name is Brylan, Brylan Hollyhan. Hey, Brylan, good to see you in person. Joey, happy Tuesday. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be in Montgomery. Happy Tuesday. So what brings you to Montgomery? Well, I'm just here today. We've been in the State House. I tried to come once a session to meet with some of our legislature. So I just wrapped up a meeting with Lieutenant Governor Ainsworth. We were with Cynthia Allen before then, Gerald Allen before that. Uh, we had lunch with Garland Gudger um, and, and met with some of our, our, our caucus friends cool. and had a great time. So really appreciate them and the support. Today's meetings were just about making sure that my generation gets a seat at the table going forward. And they were very receptive to that. The lieutenant governor was very, very receptive to making sure that going forward in the state of Alabama, that my, our generation gets a seat. I'll be voting for the first time this November. And so uh, that's that's pretty cool to get to talk to them about that and all the things that are coming up in this session. So busy time to be in Montgomery, but excited to talk to you. And so uh, for folks who don't know, you're 17? 17. 17. Yes, and uh, you're, you have an executive position in what, the Youth Advisory Council <laughs> yes, for the GOP? I'm the co-chair of the RNC's inaugural Youth Advisory Council. Oh, so, awesome. so how do you end up in something like that? <laughs> Yeah, so it started after the 2022 midterms. I was a little disappointed in how the Republicans performed in that election oh, and yeah. thought that there was a problem. And a lot of fingers are being pointed. A lot of blame was being thrown around about what was the problem? Was it our candidates? Was it who was endorsing the candidates? Was it the way that we were addressing issues? What was it? And Joey, to be honest, I didn't think it was any of those issues. I thought it was simply our lack of engagement with my generation. Hmm. Um, and so in January, I wrote this long form op-ed titled, The GOP Must Address the Elephant in the Room, Gen Z. And it immediately got on Fox News the next morning, made national news, kind of went viral. And I got a call from the RNC chairwoman. And I talk about this in my book in the first chapter. And I'd never been reached out to by the RNC. I didn't really know where this was going. I was a little scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm about to get blacklisted. Like I just called the party. I now have a meeting with the chairwoman. It's kind of getting like called in the principal's office from our perspective in high school. Right. Like this isn't going to go well. And the meeting actually was very well. She said, look, I agree with you. We do have a problem. We have lacked in this area. What can we do? And I said, well, look, the DNC founded a youth council in 2005. We're almost 20 years behind them. Let's at least found a council, bring Gen Z to the table. Joey, there was one problem. There was no table for Gen Z to sit at. They had hmm. not made a youth council yet. So we had to build a table and then we brought Gen Z to it. And that's what we've been doing. We've been traveling to college campuses and now we're meeting with legislators. We're trying to get some stuff passed and appreciate you. Now I've heard uh, Gen Z characterize that sometimes they can be a, a little... Uh... Uh, in politics, let's just say, <laughs> nihilist about our institutions. Like they kind of see through the BS, for lack sure. of a better term. Yet Gen Z also strikes me as much more self-starting than, say, the millennial generation. Absolutely. So can you speak to that odd mix of, it seems like they're very wise. They grew up with the internet, Gen yes. Z did. And yet uh, they're they're not just kind of sitting and complaining. Y'all are actually yeah. getting stuff done. They are, and we actually want to do stuff. So we've been traveling to college campuses over the past year, and every single college campus I've been to, Republican or Democrat, regardless of what the student is, their background that comes up to me, they say there's clearly a problem in our country. There's clearly something we need to fix. Let's fix it. And so we can agree. We can have some common ground. Obviously, we disagree on some of the more divisive issues, but we can find common ground to come together and say, the guy that's in the Oval Office right now has got to go. They might have a solution where they think a more you know liberal person needs to be there. We obviously think a more conservative person needs to be there, but we can agree that we need to get him out to start with. Right. And so that's where we start registry voters. The big thing right now is college students, specifically conservatives, haven't famously been registered to vote before. We need to make sure they're registered to vote. We need to be getting specifically to young people. Listen, Joey, I've got breaking news for you. Joey is not Joey. Joe Biden is, <laughs> is losing young Joey people. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's losing young. You're people. You're getting great young people, but Joe Biden is losing young people. And we this is our chance for the first time in decades for the 
the Republican Party to win the youth vote. That's huge. That's monumental. That's historic. We have a shot, but we have to work for it. And it starts by registering people. So that's what we've been doing because, to your point, they realize, they say through the BS, as you said, we need to get them on our side. We need to get them registered. And that's what we're doing. So it, it's a part reaching out, just talking to folks, but also yes. creating sort of the infrastructure yes. to get out the vote. <laughs> that's the hard part. But yes. Are you still allowed to like throw a kegger or something at colleges <laughs> to like get people to show? We haven't tried that yet, but we did develop a program called Bank Your Vote where you can go online to bankyourvote.com. There's state-specific websites, and it's really simple. This is actually one of my favorite things we've gotten to do this year. You put your first name, your last name, your phone number, and your zip code. That's it. You will not hear from us till it's time to, you know, for the deadlines to come up. So when it's deadline for absentee ballot, when it's deadline for voter registration, we'll reach out to you and say, hey, we know you've got a lot of college classes going on. We know you've got exams going on. We just want to remind you, you have, you know, two weeks left to make sure you get your vote cast. You have two weeks left to make sure you register to vote. Our college students are not aware of that. They're not keeping up with that because they're busy with everything else. So that's that thing of making it accessible and setting a reminder. So I think Bank Your Vote is historic. I think it'll be monumental as we go into this election season. Hopefully we see good results. Now, uh, I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself, I guess. I've interviewed <laughs> a lot of folks, including great folks, including yourself, Brylon. But you. I believe, did you not have the opportunity to actually interview Trump? I've not yet. I've not met yet. With met with met him. Yes, with him. We talked about that last time. Yes. Yeah, but what is it like actually yeah. meeting the man in person? It's really cool. You know, I've met with him three separate times now. And yeah. the most recent time was here in Alabama. It was the night that I was on your show. And when he came uh, for that nice little state party fundraiser. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And we, we met we met before uh, his speech. And he said, you know, what can we do to help with the youth vote? And he's actually interested because he loves to have different experts around him and get different opinions. And I said, well, sir, first of all, we got to start reaching out because there's been no reach out in the past. And obviously, he knows social media well. A lot of our, our other friends are politicians that are a little older in age. It's difficult right. to tell them that social media reaches people. Donald Trump knows that better than I do. So the second I say, let's reach into social media, his mind starts turning. Well, how can we do that? And I said, well, you know. True social is great. Let's get on Instagram. Let's get on some other networks that young people actually were on. Two weeks after that conversation, he rejoined Instagram. So I can't take credit for it, but at least he's listening. And that's a good thing to have from your, your top of the ticket nominee. He listens. He he wants to ask you questions. He wants to be in the know. He loves experts around him. So it was really cool to have that conversation. I did make some Alabama football jokes. You know, he's a big sports fan. And to the end of our conversation, I was like, you got to come back to Tuscaloosa. We're doing a debate pretty soon. And if you want to come to a football game, we'd love to have you too. He didn't come to a game. He didn't come to a debate. But there's a whole other season coming up before with a new coach that he might oh, be interested yeah. in so we might see him back in brian denny soon so. yeah and uh, he got a great reception i he think he, he'll get another <laughs> he one he loves the state innovation so he gets a free one in brian well, and there's something about when he connects with like say the sports crowd like uh, yes. i don't know if you've seen those videos where he walks into a ufc event <laughs> yes, yes but it's just unreal uh, it's like a <laughs> seventy thousand man army ready to go yes. and uh, there, there's something about trump even though what he's almost 80 something yeah. if he isn't yeah. already so, but he still connects, I think, with yes. uh, folks across generations and a lot of folks you wouldn't suspect, like the the billionaire who's famous for like, you know, gold plating things <laughs> is actually connecting with everyday working folks. And I think exactly. it's a, uh, well, the joke I often use, I steal it from George Carlin. He said this about uh, Bill Clinton. Oh. And one guy says to the other, uh, that Bill Clinton is full of crap. And the other guy <laughs> says back, yeah, well, at least he's honest about it. There, there's a certain element to where Trump does that hyperbolic yes. advertising, yes. and I think it really uh, it plays into people. Now, uh, you have a new book coming out. When is it, it coming out again? July 9th. It's available for pre-order now, though, at brylandbook.com. Signed copies are on there. It's also available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you get your books. One Generation Away is officially available for pre-order, and we get to talk about it, so I'm excited about that. So One Generation Away, and we've, yes. we've already talked about this a, a little bit, uh, but you know, I've continued the conversation on these airwaves. Uh, I think... They're, we're almost in a spiritual moment. So right. it, are you seeing that on college campuses? And I mean, I've seen some of the events at Auburn yeah. and Alabama where mass baptisms, but even short of that, it seems like even the, say, secular, the people searching yeah. are speaking in more spiritual terms these yes, days. Absolutely. And since the last time we've talked about this, they had that mass baptism on UA's campus. I was there. Yeah. They had 6,000 students in Coleman Coliseum, which is amazing to have 6,000 students on a Wednesday night. Be like, oh, wow, like I'm going to actually go to a worship event and worship. That was amazing. But what was even more amazing was to see 250 students get baptized after that, to say, I'm going to make that actual public commitment of my faith. That was incredible. The last time you and I spoke a few weeks ago, I said that the middle section of my book was called the modern day F words, faith, yeah. family, and freedom. And I told you I got a little bit of pushback from some of my team. They're like, you can't call it the modern day F words. This is a book. Like all the old people are like, it's crazy. You can't do that. You're going to freak everybody <laughs> out. And I was like, no, 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 no. Listen. 
faith, family, freedom are all taboo in modern day America. They're all under attack. Why? Because that's what the left hates the most. They hate faith. They hate family. They hate freedom. And that's what we need to bring back. If we want a revival in this nation, it starts with faith. Absolutely. And we back that up by strong families. And we back that up with having the freedom to worship God. So people were like, how can you tie these revivals that are going on back into your book? I can do it simply by saying that we have to have a revival. It cannot happen if we don't have faith, if we don't have strong families, if we don't have freedom. Because if we don't have freedom, we can't worship God. We will not have a free America for my generation and a generation to follow me to grow up. And it's so important. And I appreciate you giving time to stuff like that. Of course. And well, yesterday we played a clip of all people. The author of The God Delusion, Richard <laughs> Dawkins, was wow. calling himself a cultural Christian in a recent interview. Wow. <laughs> and some say he's been saying stuff like that for years, but like he's saying it now explicitly. Yeah. He's still, I, mean, I still don't believe, but it's <laughs> like, um, why are you saying this now, Richard? Like it, it is a, an odd time where I think we're reassessing first principles, uh, yes. reassessing our foundations. Uh, now, as you travel around the country, you're going nationwide, right? Yes, absolutely. Are you seeing like certain places that you know, nothing's a lost cause, but uh, like you've been to the UC Berkeley campus, for I'm instance. Not, they have not invited me, Joey. <laughs> to no surprise. I'm right. not invited to Berkeley yet. So, like, uh, you know, I, I'm wondering one change that could happen to this country because there's the formal centers of power in politics, yes. you know, elected officials and whatnot, but there's these informal systems, say in corporate media and in the university system. And one change that could be huge is, you know, it's I know we're going to have Caroline Dobson on here in a second. She went to Harvard, and you hear Harvard, wow. and you're like, okay smart woman here um but i think there's also folks these days who go oh harvard Ugh. so you're one of those uh, little weird you know blue-haired types and do you think that change of reputation of our major institutions though it hurts to see people lacking trust does that change lead to something good it can it can because i think people will grow frustrated at some point I think we see, I mean, obviously, I, I'll, I'll just give a shout out to Auburn's campus. This is coming from Tuscaloosa Boy, but Auburn has one of the most organized Turning Point USA and CR chapters in the nation. They've won an award last year for one of the most organized. It's incredible. So they're doing a great job. Obviously, Auburn, a pretty famously conservative campus. I'm not too concerned about there. We go to other campuses. I haven't been to Berkeley yet, but I've been to some close. Mm -hmm. And we go to some of our you know, more liberal campuses, more liberal states, obviously get a little bit of pushback and criticism. But like I told you at the beginning, we even have liberals who voted for Joe Biden or their parents voted for Joe Biden, and they see that there's trouble in the country, not just the economy, but at the southern border with what's going on everywhere. They see that there's issues. They want to change that. So I think there'll be a level of frustration that grows at some point that people start boycotting this movement that the left has built with these campuses and you'll you'll like this the the first their second chapter the first chapter of the book is called the birth of the american teenager okay. it talks about kind of how it's kind of a history my history nerd comes out in that section we kind of give you a history lesson in chapter one chapter two or section two we kind of talk about what's going on and then section three is my favorite because we give a roadmap uh, to to success going forward for the party in the nation but in chapter two, it specifically talks about Marxism and how it got into the education system, mm. because that's where it seeped in. When we had the hippie movement come in and the Marxist teachers and professors came into education, they've been there ever since. And they've been indoctrinating our children. And that's why this book's important. This, my, this book, my debut book, One Generation Away, is for my generation. It's for my peers that are concerned about what's going on in the country that don't think that there's going to be a free America for them to grow up in. But it's also for parents, parents that see the indoctrination that's going on in their kids' classrooms that are fed up with this and won't change. They want to stop and push back against indoctrination. And third, it's for, it's for grandparents. Grandparents that, are, that want to teach their children and grandchildren about conservatism, but they don't know how. It's difficult. It's very, it's very hard to talk about this. Stuff, right. Joey. This is this book's for everybody. That's why I encourage your audience to go pre-order it, One Generation Away on BrownBook.com, because we've got to get to them, and we can start changing the campus. You're absolutely right. It starts on campuses, then it goes into the homes. Now, as as me, and I imagine you're also doing a lot of media, yes. and <laughs> I do not say anything about me, but I, I mean, like when you talk to rising stars in media, yourself included. Uh, who really has impressed? Like you're like blown away by like this, yeah. uh, a particular rising star, usually a younger person. <laughs> so I, Monday, yesterday, that's only been yesterday. Wow, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> um, we, I did a media day. We had about, you know, 10, 12 different interviews back to back. Some were radio, some were podcasts. We booked all the people that have reached out into one day because I was off of school for Easter Monday. And I, I did an interview with this 15 year old hmm. and it was really cool. He has this up and coming podcast. His name is Gabe. And I'm going to be sharing his interview in a second on my social media. And it was really fun. It was a 30 minute conversation. He went in depth. He had like 12 prepared questions for me. Right. And it wasn't like what Joe Biden gets. It's not, it wasn't what's your favorite ice cream flavor. Right. It was, why did you go into this 
area at this time? Why do you think the book's necessary because of what could happen here? Do you really think revival is possible? How could we do that? Not just the, is Trump going to win in November? Like it's, it's right. how does Trump win? What can we do to make sure that things happen after Trump's election? And so he was very into it. I, I really, you know, it was so cool to see other young people. And I shared that story later on in another interview. And the, the guy was like, oh, is that not competition? Like, do you not like view that? I was like, absolutely no. not. Like, I was like, it made my day. I was so inspired to see Gabe and, and other young people stand up and speak out. And so that's what kind of keeps me going by seeing people that's coming. Cool. I, my favorite thing is having people come up at college campuses. And they're like, hey, because of you, I started simply posting stuff on my Instagram story. Mm. I might have lost followers, I might have lost friends, but I spoke my mind on my Instagram story and I won some people over and you know it worked out in the process. That's inspiring. That's why we keep going. And that's what we hope to see. Now to end with, because uh, you said you're you're really into history. Yes. <laughs> um, number one, I would recommend if you haven't read him already, Arthur Herman. He's been a okay. guest on the show. I think he's still in National Security Council, but awesome. the two I would recommend are uh, uh, his first one, it's a little crunchy, a uh, little dense, but it's uh, the idea of decline in Western history. Okay. And so he lays out all the different uh, left wing and right wing ideologies that popped up uh, that said, oh, the West is done. We're done. We've lost our soul, so to speak. <laughs> and he lays out how, no, uh, actually, whether it's the Unabomber, Al Gore or, you know, Spengler in Germany, all these people were wrong. We keep defying that. Um, and then I'd also recommend his book, The Cave in the Light. Okay. Uh, which is a history of the West through the lens of Plato versus Aristotle. It's a freaking brilliant yeah. book. And he has a bunch of others. He's a Pulitzer finalist, um, really great guy. But if you're, I'd imagine you're going to study history when you're uh, going to college. What sort of area do you already have sort of a itch to look more That's into? A, the Lieutenant Governor just asked me that question. Okay. Already. That's a great question. Um, so I'm currently taking AP US history right now. It's my favorite class I've ever taken. And it's not one of those that I like bored by like it's always interesting i'm always learning something else there's all these like tiny little minute details that really played such a huge part in history and how we're still a nation this great experiment that's america is still a nation nearly 250 years later it's incredible so i'm thinking about you know we'll look into maybe some type of political science degree um maybe something in business just to kind of keep generic but also looking at i talked about maybe major in history and just see where that goes i know some of the some of the history departments in the state are a little bit more liberal yeah and so we'll have to see how that that route goes but that's totally something i'll explore and particularly in that first section of the book i don't want your readers to get bored or skip over it but that's where my history nerd comes out and that's where we're kind of like the question i get i know you get it a lot too is how did we get where we are like, right. What happened? What went wrong? We lay all of it out. We start in you know the early 1900s and go up, you know, obviously six season hippie revolution, and then get to modern day and say these are specific things that went wrong that turned the country the way we are today. Here's how we reverse them. And that's why I think it's so important. And this is a recipe to save America. Uh, it's nothing else. We're not trying to scare people away. We're trying to we're trying to say that there's still hope. That there is still an American dream. I had somebody in media day yesterday say, oh well. There's not an American dream. Well, stop telling people that. I'm living proof of that, Joey. I'm the 17-year-old political commentator with a book that's about to hit bookshelves across the country in July. That's crazy. That's unheard of. That doesn't happen anywhere else. That is the American dream, and we need to remind everybody of that. Well, I appreciate uh, your time today. And yeah, you've, I could sit here and, and talk history with oh, you yes. for a while. <laughs> American, or I just started uh, Will Durant's, what, Age of Faith. Yes. I realized, yes. okay, I know the Greeks and Romans fairly well, but it starts to get blurry around the yes. medieval times. and. Uh, it's just the more I read it, the more I figure out that, man, there are good guys and bad guys, but it's also um, a lot of very flawed people, even yes. the best guys. Yes. Uh, and it's it reminds you to have hope because uh, looking backwards, sometimes I think we we do too much of a moral melodrama with our yes. history right. and don't see the actual people. And they're just as flawed as we are. I'll put it that way. <laughs> and yet they did amazing things. And uh, it is amazing to see you uh, rising you. up. And uh, appreciate uh, your time and Absolutely. would love to have you back anytime you're interested. Yes. Thank you for having me, Joey. Have a great week. Hope you had a great Easter and appreciate your continued support. Happy Easter, sir. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. <laughs> With SRN News, I'm John Scott. Iran is bound to respond to a deadly airstrike widely attributed to Israel. The demolished Iran's consulate building in the Syrian capital and killed eight people, including two Iranian generals. An Israeli airstrike that killed seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen. That has led to the charity to suspend delivery of vital food aid to Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu acknowledged that Israeli forces had carried out the unintended strike. 
In Mexico, a mayoral candidate shot in the north-central state of Guanajuato. The killing, the latest in the increasingly bloody run-up to Mexico's June 2nd elections. At least 15 candidates have been killed since the start of the year. On Wall Street, the Dow is down 460 points, the Nasdaq losing 186. This is SRN News. Our government has engorged itself on borrowed money. Now we are over $30 trillion in debt. If this bubble finally implodes, many Americans would be left penniless and heartbroken. For example, what happens if state and federal pension funds go broke or 401ks and IRAs get cut in half due to hyperinflation? Hi, I'm Lance Wallnow, news analyst, best-selling author and evangelical leader to millions of people just like you. People who understand something big is coming. Now's the time to prepare with a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. Precious metals are among the most proven hedges you can make. They're even better inside a tax advantage account. To get a free info kit on gold IRAs, text the word FAITH, F-A-I-T-H, to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and see why a gold IRA can help you. There are no strings attached, so just text FAITH to the number 989898 right now, and I pray you are blessed with continued prosperity. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Hi, everybody. This is Rich Thomas. We definitely want everybody to stay weather aware, especially as we go into the evening and nighttime hours tonight with an increasing severe weather threat across the area, including all modes of severe weather, and tornadoes are possible. Showers and thunderstorms likely this evening and tonight as a line of storms swoops across the area. Our free weather app will keep you on top of the action with instant push notifications. Go to the App Store, search Rich Thomas Weather. Windy tonight, low 56, and tomorrow, much cooler. A brisk day with highs only in the 60s, and gusty winds will make it seem cooler. Maybe some upper 30s by Thursday and Friday night. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for generations since we began in 1906. At CBNS Bank, we're here for you. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC and equal housing lender. 1819 News. The governor responds to a lawsuit that challenges the racial quotas applied to the Alabama Real Estate Appraisers Board. That lawsuit comes from the Pacific Legal Foundation regarding a state law requiring two of the nine board members to be of a minority race. The lawsuit was filed this past February, contending that the racial quota eliminates equal consideration for others who are qualified but not a minority. The governor's attorney, James Davis, says that the nine appointments coming from the governor are yet to be approved by the state Senate and that the governor did not not enforce the racial quota requirement in her nominations. Davis argues that the racial quota is a recommendation and unenforceable and that the governor has not been adhering to it. A hearing on the lawsuit is scheduled for later this April. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. Are you enjoying 1819 News? If so, consider joining 1819 News as a member. As a nonprofit news organization, we depend on the support of Alabamians like you. Memberships start out as little as $5 a month, and you'll get access to exclusive content only offered to our members. You'll be supporting independent journalism done by people who cherish Alabama values. Become a member today by visiting 1819news.com and clicking Become a Member. That's 1819news.com and click Become a Member today. Over a dozen people connected to the Decatur City Council, the Decatur Police Department, and the State Department of Investigations have now been put on a list of requested subpoenas in a case against a former police officer who was charged with shooting and killing Stephen Perkins back in 2023. The subpoena list was filed this past Monday for a hearing that will be held next week in the case against Mac Marquette. An investigation is underway in Scottsboro regarding a fatal shooting outside of a warehouse in that city on Sunday. 42-year-old Lazarel Fennell was arrested on Monday for the shooting death of Deontay Johnson. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Hello, everyone. Robbie Pelt with Capital City Roofing. If you think about it, your home is your biggest investment in life. 
Your roof covers your home, so why jeopardize your biggest investment on a roofer you don't know anything about when you can deal with a reputable roofing company like Capital City Roofing? We have an A-plus better business rating and the best manufacturers and workmanship warranties available. We do all residential and commercial roofing applications that are certified through the manufacturer to ensure you get the best material and workmanship money can buy. We also have your project in our best interest before and after construction has been done. Don't hesitate to call us if you have any roofing issues or questions. We will match any of our competitors' price and give you the same great workmanship warranty. We also give free estimates. Give us a call today and let us show you the difference. 277-3311. That's 277-3311. Or you can check us out on the web at www.capitalcityroofing.com. Capital City Roofing. We capitalize the roofing industry. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. For Montgomery's conversational radio show, it's News and Views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. Hey, miss. I don't mean to be telling tales out of school, but there's a fella in there who'll pay you ten dollars if you sing into his can. I'm not here to make a record, you jump cracker. They broadcast me out on the radio. You know you conduct yourself in a democracy. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Final hour of the program here. Appreciate everybody watching on Twitter X, as well as YouTube. You can go to at the Joey Clark on Twitter X or Joey Clark Live on YouTube. And now, as uh, promised, as previewed, we have on the line, she is a candidate for Congress in the brand new District 2, is in a runoff that is coming up April the 16th. We have Caroline Dobson on the phone. Hey, Caroline, how are you? Hi, Joey. I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. So uh, where are you calling from today? Where have you been traveling today? Um, I have been down in the far southern part of the district. Um, I always enjoy being in studio with y'all. But, yeah, today I am um, was in Sims this morning, um, and now I'm headed to Mobile. Well, it, it's good to have you on over the phone here. Now, uh, one question I, I was asking your opponent, um, and it's more it's not one that I think is going to show up on the top of any polling list. This is just Joey. Uh, I need help. Um, I have this problem where I, the more I watch our federal government in particular, I'm like, I don't think this body, this institution is legitimate morally or constitutionally. Uh, yet it, it remains there. And you're looking to join this government, represent people in this brand new district. How do we get back to actually following the Constitution and actually have some legitimacy in terms of what our founding documents actually say. Yeah, well, it, that's why it takes people who are willing to go up and fight for what's right, regardless of, you know, how the, the political fallout might be or, um, you know, whether or not it's a popular stance. But yes, you know, um, we, ha- we need a larger majority in the House um, than... Speaker Johnson won't, uh, you know, will will have the backing that he needs to stand up to Chuck Schumer uh, when it comes to our, our, our balancing the budget. Um, but we need people. We, we don't just just need you know Republican bodies. We need strong conservatives. Um, and in this regard, you know, I think there's a distinction between me and my opponent. When he was in the state Senate, he left the Republican caucus. In 2021, he tweeted that he had left or was ending his association with the Alabama GOP. Um, You know, I was raised that if there's an institution or a group or an organization that you're part of that is straying from its founding principles, that's when you dig in and fight and try to steer the ship the right way, return our country to um, the Constitution, to our founding principles. So it's not when you throw up your hands and and leave the room. Um, If we have that attitude, we won't have a country after long. We need someone who we can trust is going to stand for strong conservative values and, and fight against the left and also fight to return our party um, to uh, what it should be advocating for, which is limited government. And uh, now, next question, also ask your opponent this. Um, 
Is the United States a Christian nation? Yes, the United States should be a Christian nation. But I think the fact that we had our, our president declare Easter Sunday, uh, Transgender Visibility Day, or, or whatever he wanted to call it, um, indicates how far we have strayed from um, our, our foundation as a nation under God. Um, you know, all of our, our founding fathers uh, acknowledged, uh, you were, were speaking of, of Benjamin Franklin, you know, mm-hmm. um, who wasn't maybe necessarily uh, the most traditional Christian. I know Thomas Jefferson was more of a deist, but still they recognized that, um, you know, that, that the basic rights of, of humankind are endowed by our creator God. Um, and so, you know, we, we, that's what our nation was founded on. And I, I think I hear two narratives, you know, one is that, uh, the transgender visibility day, you know, was purpose, purposely chosen to be Easter as a slap in the face, uh, to Christianity. And then the other, <laughs> the other line, which is equally bad is that, uh, folks in the white house didn't realize that March 31 was Easter and that Easter, you know, <laughs> it's like, what, uh, what's worse that we have, uh, you know, uh, an administration that is uh, actively denigrating Christianity or an administration that is clueless as to the holiest of holies days in Christianity. They're both uh, equally appalling. Yeah, and we are really in a, uh, I think, a a time of uh, a crucible. I think we're going through Mm -hmm. some birth pangs that hopefully will birth something new that's good. Uh, You know, who knows what's, (laughs) it could be an awful spawn. Who knows? But it depends on who stands up and, and fights. I suppose, you know, news that broke yesterday, and I don't think it's getting any better today necessarily, is when you look at the geopolitical map uh, and you look at Israel just struck inside Damascus, killed one of the top commanders for the uh, Iranian Quds Force, as you also are seeing the Ukrainians strike deep into Russia, 800 miles into Russia. They took out, I think, the Russians' third largest oil refinery. Uh, The White House pushed back out against that for all sorts of reasons. But uh, I guess my question to you after setting the table is, do you see wider war coming in these two different theaters uh, that the United States indirectly are inv- or directly is involved in? And what should be the role of the United States going forward in the world? Well, look, the reason that we, you know, the reason that Russia invaded Ukraine, the reason that Iran has become the superpower in the Middle East is all attributable to the Biden administration. Um, the the withdrawal from Afghanistan, the fact that the Biden administration allowed Russia to build the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that allowed them to circumvent Ukraine. Um, you know, mistake after mistake has been made uh, by the Biden administration that reveals, you know, how how weak our commander-in-chief is. I and mean, just the fact that he, you know, his own counsel said he's not fit to stand trial. You know, that's who's leading our military and our national defense. Um, that's why it's so important that we both get President Trump back in the White House and have um, a legislative body that is actively supporting President Trump. Um, I think, as I've said before, you know, I'm not a hawk or a dove, but I believe in deterrence, and deterrence is built on strength. So I think we need to be um, increasing our military preparedness. That means restoring trust with our military, stop treating our military like guinea pigs or mm-hmm. liberal social experiments. And that also means giving our military the equipment that they need um, because we're lagging behind our enemies in the production of materiel. Uh, the Chinese Navy is bigger than ours. Here in this district, uh, we have Austell, Airbus, uh, Lockheed Martin, and Troy. Um, we have some, some key industries here that can help us catch up with our enemies. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see a world in which we have to send um, our young people off uh, to engage in these uh, – you know, geopolitical battles. Um, But the only way we're going to avoid that is by once again having a strong commander in chief and and having a military uh, that is that is strong and it's adequately equipped. Now, I believe the interest on the debt, just debt service with the Fed raising interest rates, it's something over 870 billion. That's more than it's more than our defense spending. Right. And so how much do you think a, made worse by this newest spending bill? <laughs> right. And, you know, the Congress just the Senate just passed a resolution talking about how the debt is such a threat to national security. And then this new bill comes around and I'm um, like, well, more of the usual stuff coming out of Washington. 
But how much do you think the debt load currently on the nation and just our general fiscal monetary policy actually plays into our deterrence, as you're talking about? Oh, it's directly related. I mean, well, you know, also the reason that inflation is as high as it is and interest rates are as high as they are because excessive government spending. Um, you know, we have got to cut government spending, and we've also got to so much more narrowly define what is infrastructure. You know, I feel like the, the Biden administration has uh, defined, you know, defines anything it wants to as infrastructure. And, you know, while I believe that um, we should be strategically supporting true items of infrastructure, um, you know, on a limited and case-by-case and bill-by-bill basis, um, we've allowed the Biden administration to, you know, again, this latest spending bill, there was, uh, well, $300 million to Ukraine, uh, but also $850,000 for a gay senior citizen building. You know, I mean, it's, um, it, it, we cannot continue on this spending spree. And it's because we have too many leader, quote unquote, leaders in Washington who are approaching our budget with how much can we spend, not where can we be fiscally responsible, where can we, where can we cut costs, where can we try to be more efficient in our use of taxpayer resources. Now, uh, shifting gears here a little bit, and I know uh, you addressed this last night in the debate. By the way, there was a debate last night, folks, between Caroline and uh, Dobson and Dick Brubaker. That was not aired live, so that will be coming out, what, on different TV networks and online here in the next week or so? Yes, that's my understanding. I'm not sure the, of the exact time, but it will be um, in, in our neck of the woods. It'll be on WSFA um, next week. So uh, I know you spoke to this uh, some last night, but on a so-called LGBTQ plus, they keep adding letters um, and creating a larger coalition. The flag's starting to look funky, Caroline. Um, <laughs> like when we look at uh, how crazy this is, I'll, I'll give it to you this way. Uh, the only openly, uh, I guess emphasis on openly, openly gay member of the Alabama legislature, legislature uh, Mr. Representative Rafferty, uh, he was on CNN recently saying the recent divisive concepts bill passed by Alabama and uh, the legislature and signed by the governor, that it would prevent the teaching of Martha and George Washington because, I mean, George is a man, Martha's a woman, and, uh, you know, that's a heterosexual com uh, couple. So now you're talking gender identity, you're talking sexual orientation. Is this really what we're up against is, I guess, my question. And I didn't know if you saw that news story, but it seems like we're operating with different worldviews and frames at this point. It seems absurd. Right. No. Well, and the fact that, again, with the, the crises that we have going on globally with our national debt, the fact that we even have to, you know, have a discussion about, um, you know, the bio biological reality that is gender. You know, it's a reality. You're a man or you're a woman. And, and the fact that we're even having to debate this and, dis and discuss this is, um, you know, it, it's appalling and it's disconcerting. And we're, we're spending time on, on <laughs> um, you know, again, uh, stated reality that we should be spending time on addressing, you know, health care and national defense and our budget. Um, and it's, it's just, it's incredibly frustrating, but it's also incredibly concerning as a mother of, of two young girls. Um, I will fight to ensure that, uh, girls sports are only for girls, that, um, girls locker rooms are only for girls. And, and the fact that I even have to fight for that again is, uh, you know, just, just mind blowing, unfortunately. It is unfortunate. Now, you know, with the development of all these new technologies, whether you're talking artificial intelligence or now, you know, with the IVF coming, issue coming up in Alabama and the national news, you actually look into how much, say, the cost of biological bioengineering has fallen uh, to where people are essentially, the, you know, curating what sort of child or what type of person they want to bring into this world. If folks think the transgender issue is bad, get ready for transhumanism. Uh, are you worried, especially when you combine all these new technologies, that there's a certain set of elites that are trying to essentially say, you can choose to be a man or a woman, or you can even choose to be more machine than man. Uh, and I'm thinking of folks like Yuval Harari, who've written best-selling books and given TED Talks, and he's pretty explicit about this. 
uh, where the heck is this going? No, it's, it's certainly concerning. And you, you hear about, I, I heard the other day about a school that had a, a litter box in their bathroom because there were some students that identified as cats. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, I think this is, this is demonstrated um, just how far our, our country has strayed um, from our, our foundation faith in God. Um, and, and how willing, you know, people who, who lack, who lack faith in God, um, are, are swayed by trends and hysterias. And, um, that's all the more reason why we have got to fight to, to restore faith in this nation. Um, it's, it's, it's not a, a, a wish list item. It's a necessity. Yeah, and it, again, it seems like we're going through a crucible where all sorts of basic mm-hmm. principles are, are being tested. I'm pretty much out of time here, but if folks want to support your campaign and, and get ready for this runoff, it's getting closer by the day, how can they do so? Yes, um, no, I have a website, www.dobsonforcongress, that's D-O-B as in boy, S-O-N-F-O-R, Congress. Also have accounts on Facebook, Instagram, X, and Truth Social. Dobson for Congress. Um, thank you for the opportunity to visit with you today, and um, please check me out. Well, I appreciate it, Caroline, and uh, until next week, uh, God bless. <laughs> Thanks, you too. Bye. Again, folks, that's Caroline Dobson, and uh, well, we're going to have both Caroline and Mr. Dick Brubaker on the program leading up to the actual runoff on April the 16th. Got to hit another break here. But first, this part of the program brought to you by Dylan Rings. And, you know, we were telling you earlier that if you're an April baby, your birthstone is actually diamonds. And they have all sorts of amazing options in stock there at Dylan Rings. Diamond pendants, some a little more traditional, classical, some uh, kind of whimsical and a little more out there. Depending on your personality, they have something that suits you at Dylan Rings, but also at Dylan Rings, they are a full-service jewelry shop. So not only do they have an amazing selection from high-end pieces to that everyday jewelry that still looks great but isn't going to break the bank, but they can also do things like repairs, including watch repairs, maybe just resetting a stone, maybe a spa treatment where you're looking to update your jewelry in a way that, uh, well, you don't really change much other than making it shine even more, making it sparkle even more and of course they do custom design work there at dylan rings and josh Ryder, what an artist he's kind of a mix between mad scientist and artist the the man is truly talented at what he does so you can take an old piece that you want to change up or some folks have combined different pieces of jewelry or well you could have a dream and josh Ryder can make it a reality whether it's something poignant to remember a loved one, or it's something silly like a funky fresh medallion. They can do it all there at Dylan Rings. So check them out today. I really encourage you to stop by their showroom. The brand new remodeled showroom looks great. That's 119 Brown Springs Road, just off of Atlanta Highway. Um, I think of it by where the old fun zone used to be. You can still see that platform in the background, but be sure to stop by 119 Brown Springs Road and tell Josh and Leslie Ryder that Joey, that fell on the radio, or whatever you want to call them, that Joey sent you. We'll be right back. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Independent Glass has been your one-stop shop for all things glass since 1978. They offer a full range of architectural products, and they're armed with the knowledge and expertise to get even the most demanding job done, big or small. Attention to detail, 24-hour replacement services, and their uncompromising commitment to excellence is why Montgomery's first choice for all things glass is Independent Glass. Call them today at 263-2823 and learn more about what they can do for you at independentglassco.com. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company. Run by Alabamians for Alabamians, 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. 
Hi, this is Carl Schmidt, naturopath and owner of The Herb Shop. Listen every Saturday to Winning Wellness and learn from experts in different fields of science and technology how nutritional supplements can help you. Listen to Winning Wellness every Saturday at 10 a.m. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Live Local Talk, the River Region's only 24-hour News Talk FM station. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. Or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. 272-9228. If you want to hop in on the program, that's 272-9228. Now, uh, there was a weird mashup, folks. And I mean weird mashup. A meeting of mind, so to speak, on the dissident right and left Steve Bannon, that's right, sloppy Steve, Steve Bannon, and Russell Brand, they got together and did a podcast. And there was one moment, as those two were getting to know one another, that suggests this is why Hillary Clinton was telling you to get over yourself. Just pick between the old guy who's actually competent and the old guy who's been indicted 91 times. <laughs> Just go away, Hillary. Actually, don't go away. You're making everybody not want to vote for Biden the more you stump for him. It's miserable. No wonder Bill stepped out. <clears throat> but this was uh, Steve Bannon and Russell Brand talking about the candidacy of RFK Jr. And uh, some fascinating points between these two. When you have... The dissident right and the dissident left, alternative media stars both, essentially seeing the same thing. Maybe we should all pay attention. You better believe the establishment is paying attention. Let's listen in together. Keep the White House in this regard if they don't win Michigan. And right now, President Trump's up eight points in Michigan. And that is because there's a significant amount of Arab Americans that are just saying, we don't support the Biden uh, regime in this regard, and we're going to stay home. Yes, and Bobby Kennedy is also very popular in that state, and it does seem to be yeah, a significant interface in that uh, particular campaign. For uh, There's uh, so many things I want to cover, Steve, but like, just let me touch on... Yeah. Look, can, I say, can I say one thing? I'd yeah. like to say one thing about Bobby Kennedy, because I think Bobby Kennedy started, and I felt that, uh, you know, although I'm a Kennedy Democrat for, as a little kid because of being Irish Catholic, right, when you just didn't, never even conceive, I come from a blue-collar working-class family, the conception you would vote for a Republican would almost be like you would leave the church, right? It was that ridiculous. Um, Bobby Kennedy, I think, started out and had a tremendous message, and that message was, I never seen an individual with such clarity about the biopharmaceutical industry and the power it has exerted on modern society. And he was, to me, the most powerful voice about techno-feudalism and what techno-feudalism oh, yeah. really, uh, really uh, was about. I think, unfortunately, over his, I mean, fortunately, as a Trump supporter, because I'd always hoped that at one time we could actually blend the Kennedy movement, particularly the anti-vax part of it, which has a big portion of the MAGA base. As you know, I'm not vaxxed. Uh, we were the most adamant. We were banned. We were banned on every platform, never to return because of our election denial and because of vax. Um, that we could see a fusion of MAGA and what Bobby Kennedy stood for into a movement that really could be two thirds of the populace of the United States. Now, unfortunately, I think Bobby and his team, as he as he's, he got shut up by the Democrat Party, he ran as an independent. He's almost run to the left. And so now you're right. He's a dagger to the, particularly with uh, Shanahan, uh, I think it's Nicole Shanahan, his uh, vice presidential pick. He's a dagger at the heart of the Democratic Party right now. Th he almost takes very few Trump voters, very few MAGA, even the even the strong anti-vax nature of our and the anti-biopharmaceutical industry. 
part of the MAGA, which is a very large part, I think would pass on Bobby Kennedy now to support Trump very strongly. But Bobby Kennedy's a dagger at the heart of the Democratic Party. If Bobby Kennedy gets access, and they know this, this is why they're coming down on him so hard. If he gets access to the ballots, if he's on the ballot in those states, I think it's very hard mathematically, given the coalition of Biden is not coming there. The under 35s are hesitant. The African-American community, the male particularly is hesitant. The Hispanic community is hesitant. The Arab American or the Muslim community is hesitant. His coalition is tough to come together with enthusiasm. You add Bobby Kennedy on top of that. I think it's a dagger to the heart of the neoliberal, neocon uh, Democratic Party. Man, said a mouthful there. But uh, I think it's spot on. And this is why 2024 is going to be one of the most interesting years in politics we've ever seen. Who knows how it shakes out. Pray for Bobby Kennedy, by the way. There's not a great track record when Kennedys get too close to the sun, if you catch my drift. Now, shifting gears here a little bit, back to Alabama news. There's some stuff coming out at 1819news.com right now, including an op-ed from the Attorney General of the great state of Alabama, Steve Marshall. This is penned by Steve Marshall. I want to present it to you. It's uh, fairly short here. But he writes, today, the Alabama House of Representatives will debate the latest attempt to rewrite of our, well, rewrite our current ethics laws. I, again, this is Attorney General Steve Marshall, I am strongly opposed to this legislation. It is important to me that the members of the legislature and the general public understand why. Well, let's understand why then. This bill decriminalizes an array of ethics offenses, rendering them subject to civil, not criminal, penalties imposed by the Ethics Commission. Current law already provides for the non-criminal resolution of minor ethics violations. This bill assigns civil pen penalties, referred to as some by speeding tickets, to an array of serious and substantial violations of the public trust, regardless of the amount of money involved. For example, if a legislator knows that he or she has a conflict of interest while sponsoring or voting on a piece of legislation, even a conflict involving a substantial financial interest, that conduct would now be subject to civil penalty. If a public official directs or steers a government contract or other financial business to benefit himself or a family member, that conduct would now be subject to a civil penalty. If a legislator lobbied his own legislative body on behalf of a client, that conduct would also now be subject to a civil penalty. Where the criminal penalties used to be, House Bill 227 instead stands up a new regime of public reprimands and civil penalties for conduct that simply cannot be excused as accidental or unintentional. Wow. Again, I'm reading from this op-ed from Steve Marshall, the Attorney General here of the great state of Alabama. So wait, the director steer government contracts to benefit themselves or family member has a conflict of interest sponsoring a piece of legislation, lobbies on behalf of a client, lobbies a the legislature they might even be in. This is now just a civil speeding ticket that you get. Sounds like some folks there in the Alabama legislature. Sounds like some folks on Goat Hill. I uh, want to get a little bit richer. Like I was saying last week, folks, corruption is the system. Stop kidding yourself about politics and government. But Steve Marshall continues. He says, this legislation also dramatically expands what public officials can legally receive from lobbyists and other special interests. Lobbyists and other prohibited sources, quote unquote, will now be able to spend up to $100 per indication or $500 a year on $500 a year on gifts to public officials, even while expanding the list of items not subject to these limits. Food, hospitality, and travel expenses for educational and economic development functions are already permitted under current law. Begging the question, what other spoils would a politician really need a lobbyist or principal to pay for? Under this bill, writes Attorney General Steve Marshall, a public official's sibling or adult child is also able to receive gifts or other benefits in any amount, even from a lobbyist or someone with business before the governmental body. 
To make matters worse, the first two violations of the gift ban would now be subject only to civil penalties, regardless of the amount given or received. In the spirit of compromise, my office, again, Steve Marshall's office, recommended a change to this legislation that would provide civil penalties for ethics offenses involving less than $1,500 in exchange for clarifying our continued ability to prosecute genuine corruption without additional impediments. That offer was rejected, leaving me to conclude that this rewrite isn't just about the fear of inadvertent mistakes. Though this debate too often centers around the myth of public officials going to jail over having a meal paid for, this distracts from the very serious questions presented by this bill. What standard does the public want us to hold ourselves to? The truth is, regular folks want honest government, disinterested decision makers. If I had to guess, would rather elect officials just pay have would rather have elected officials just pay for their own meals. The now infamous Republican legislative agenda in 2010 promised to put an end to an atmosphere that breeds corruption and encourages graft. Though we have come a long way, there are plenty of reasons for me, and this is Attorney General Steve Marshall, to simply say that we are not there yet. Yeah, no kidding. I think uh, the best way to stop a lot of the corruption is just shrink or abolish a lot of aspects of the government. Take away the power altogether in a lot of cases. I don't care how well-intentioned it is. The road to hell is paved with many a good intention, folks. But uh, I appreciate that op-ed uh, from the Attorney General of the state, Attorney General Marshall. Uh, interesting insight. And if his characterization stands up to scrutiny, which it probably will, uh, that's damning. It's incredibly damning. That essentially you're taking all the teeth out of the laws that keep them from lobbying on behalf of clients while in the legislature, lobbying or passing legislation outright, sponsoring legislation that would benefit themselves personally. This is, mm -mm. that doesn't smell right whatsoever. Also just came out from 1819 News. Uh, this is from Jeff Poor's desk. He'll be joining us tomorrow at noon. Mobile-based Center for Reproductive Medicine, IVF Clinic, has now resumed practice. On Monday, the Mobile-based Center for Reproductive Medicine resumed operations after a more than a month pause in the wake of an Alabama Supreme Court decision granting in vitro fertilization embryos protection under Alabama's Wrongful Death of a Minor Act. Huh. So they're back in business. This uh, particular clinic this particular institution is also run by the president of the medical association of the state of alabama oh, dr george Kulianis, or something like that sorry sir it's all greek to me and yet the national conversations like oh just look at those rubes in alabama again people should be thanking alabama for actually pressing the issue because whether it's ivf or so many other new tech technologies that are coming our way we don't seem to be willing to face up to the actual moral dilemmas inherent in our new abilities and at least alabama is somewhat forcing the issue you know they seem to balk a little bit by giving outright immunity uh, 272 9228 if you want to hop in on the program i gotta hit this break but first this part of the program brought to you by pest pro services now you heard red top call in a little earlier saying you know somebody called them up to help with termite damage they should have called pest pro services earlier that's right folks whether you know it's termite treatment or repairing termite damage neither is covered by homeowners insurance so you should get the treatment done it is much less expensive than the termite damage repairs and it's not just termites that pest pro services can help you with tis mosquito season Ugh. so if you want to actually enjoy your back porch your backyard enjoy the front porch maybe that's where you like to sit after a meal with family get pest pro to treat your yard for those nasty nasty mosquitoes and they really are nasty and wouldn't it be nice to be able to sit outside with grandma not to spray her with off I think so. And of course, 
with spring, you know, springing as it is right now, you can have issues with fire ants, wasps, any sort of these insects around your home. So Pest Pro is ready to help you across the board. You might as well make them your everyday pest control company. That number, 265-9990. That's 265-9990. Or you can always go to ppsriverregion.com or just search Pest Pro Services on the Book of Faces. When you want to know, call a pro. Pest Pro Services. And be sure to tell Ashley and that fantastic team that Joey, that guy on the radio, sent you. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Molica Pro with Hustler Turf Zero Turn Mowers. They engineer their mowers to be maintenance and service friendly for the everyday homeowner while not sacrificing the build and cut quality they're known for. From the heavy duty frame to the welded steel duct to their trademark smooth track steering, Hustler Turf Zero Turn Mowers deliver a professional grade cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Why don't you stop by and see Dietzville Ace Hardware? See the hustler difference for yourself today. Dietzville Ace Hardware on US 31 just north of Prattville or Google Dietzville Ace Hardware for more information. Hello, I'm Johnny Sullivan from Sinclair's Restaurant. We're almost 27 years and our business is as good as ever and I'll Give the credit to Blue Water Broadcasting for keeping us on the air and letting people know what we do. Advertising with them has been a huge help to our business. I've seen an uptick from day one. If you need to grow your business, I highly recommend you give them a call. Blue Water Broadcasting is the number one most listened to radio group in the River Region. Find out how to put this reach to work for your business. Call us to find out how we can help. Blue Water Broadcasting. Local folks helping local business. The Health and Wealth Show. The Health and Wealth Show. The show so nice, we said it twice. Weekday evenings at 6 on News Talk 93.1 WACV. The Health... Make it up, son. Joke's over, hey? This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Rich Thomas Weather brought to you by Clark Heating, Air, and Plumbing. It's time to get your cooling system ready for the long, hot summer. Call today about the advantages of the Clark Club membership to be sure you're covered. Call 277-2125. Better call Clark. Alabama certification number 09098. Rich Thomas Weather. Hi, everybody. This is Rich Thomas. We definitely want everybody to stay weather aware, especially as we go into the evening and nighttime hours tonight with an increasing severe weather threat across the area, including all modes of severe weather, and tornadoes are possible. Showers and thunderstorms likely this evening and tonight as a line of storms swoops across the area. Our free weather app will keep you on top of the action with instant push notifications. Go to the App Store, search Rich Thomas Weather. Windy tonight, low 56, and tomorrow, much cooler. A brisk day with highs only in the 60s, and gusty winds will make it seem cooler. Maybe some upper 30s by Thursday and Friday night. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. On FM, on your smartphone, and online, the River Region's most trusted voice, News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. Or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. Like and subscribe on YouTube at Joey Clark Live or just watch me on Twitter X at the Joey Clark. Now, um, well, it seems RFK Jr. is making the media rounds because we now have a Fox News appearance. And uh, they started off this conversation, I skipped ahead, with showing that RFK Jr. has higher favorability numbers than both Biden and Trump, which honestly I'm not surprised about. Now, as he gets into the fray and as the uh, political operatives from the Democratic Party in particular, but from all over the place, start to go to work on RFK Jr., uh, you don't know what might actually 
turn out uh, for folks? Uh, will that favorability stay high? I don't know. But uh, here, let's listen in. I haven't listened to this yet. Let's listen in uh, for the first time together. Comments about him. Uh, no, no, no. It's Brian. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Why? Yeah, every day. He shows up out of nowhere. Ah! Oh, try to go, go. Here's here now. Uh, congratulations. Great to see you. Thank congratulations you. on getting on North back. Carolina. And you've named Nicole Shanahan your running mate. Yeah. That's what a lot of these states require, don't they, Robert? They need you to name a running mate ahead of time for some reason. The tw there are 26 states where you can't start gathering signatures to get on the ballot without having a running mate first. So the uh, the announcement of, of Nicole as our running mate allows us now to get on those states, and we're going to move very, very quickly to, to get on all of them. Mm -hmm. We have a you know a conservative base uh, that every every political party watches Fox, but a lot of conservatives like Fox. They they like where you stand on vaccines, uh, men playing in women's sports, immigration. What other conservative issues do you have that will appeal to those voters? Well, you know, I I I, I don't look at myself as liberal as con or conservative. I just I feel like I'm common sense on issues. I think the issues that are really existential in this country are issues that are important to both political parties. The, the national debt is $34 trillion now. We're now spending more on, the, on servicing that debt, paying off the interest, than we pay for the military. Within five years, 50 cents of every dollar collected in taxes is going to go to the debt. This is unsustainable. Within 10 years, it'll be 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, President Trump and President Biden ran up that debt, the two of them in just four years, ran up a higher debt than all the presidents in history back to George Washington combined. And so I don't think we're going to get a change. And this is really existential for our children. The chronic disease epidemic, which now is the biggest issue in this country. 60% of our people have chronic disease. When my uncle was president, it was 6%. Mm -hmm. The cost of diabetes, and when I was a kid, the typical pediatrician would see one case of diabetes in his lifetime. Today, one out of every three kids who goes into his office is pre-diabetic or diabetic, and we are paying more to treat diabetes than the entire military budget. The cost of all these chronic diseases is $4.3 trillion. It's almost five times our military budget. It's, it's more than any other country in the world. We are the sickest country in the world. Why is nobody ever talking about this? Why aren't our agencies telling us why has America got this problem and nobody else does? Well, well Robert, uh, one of the... I'm going to pause it there, folks, because, again, he does have a unique perspective, a unique voice. And uh, with that last name of his, despite his uh, unfortunate problem with his focal cords there, Arf Cake Jr. continues to rise and not uh, be put down. But let's go to the phones and talk to Ray Bowles from Prattville Carpet. Hey, Ray, how you doing? We are doing great. That's Ace in the floor, just working away, busy as bees. You had, had to, to getting it done. You had to travel anywhere today? Well, let's see. At 7 o'clock, I was in Wetumpka. By 8.30, I was in Auburn. Came back by Pike Road, did something in Montgomery, and then been here in the store ever since. Well, busy as always, and uh, let's remind folks that you are literally go the extra mile, right? And so, and why why is measuring before picking out a product pretty important? Well, well, we can see the home. We walk in there, we know what we're looking at, we know what kind of furniture we have to move, we know what the decor looks like. We're like, oh, look at this floor, oh, look at that floor, it will go really, really good with your furniture and your walls, and it just, it really does help us. And then when you walk in the door, and you say, oh, I like this. I can tell you for the penny what it's going to cost you versus, ah, it's $5 a foot. I can say, look, it's going to be $3,000 installed. Mm. Sign here, next thing you know, you got a new floor down. Just that simple. Really, is that simple? And, you know, for folks maybe taking a late vacation or think of it a summer vacation, y'all can actually do work while people are away, right? Absolutely. I'm doing a water damage for a friend that had a shower leak. We're going to have to get in a rental property, get the whole bathroom, and, um, Retile everything. I want to put a lot box on the door so the subs can come and go as they need, and you don't have to worry about it anything because all of our subs, including us, are licensed and insured. There you go. 
So y'all check out Prattville Carpet today. That number is still 285-8117? It is. So call us today, 285-8117. And when you call them, be sure to tell them you heard Ray on the radio with that Joey fellow. Appreciate hey, you, Ray. Have a great afternoon. You too. Got to have a quick break. Uh, we'll come back, I think, a little more with this RFK appearance on Fox. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. How do you know once you pass that family and friends will get what you promised and that someone won't destroy or replace your will or trust with a fake one? How many copies of your will do you have and do your loved ones know where it is? Every time you change your will, you have to copy, distribute, and have it notarized. Put a stop to all of this at secureawill.com, where your important documents like last will, trust, or goodbye letter are stored until your passing. Then they send your info to whomever you've requested. You'll be 100% safe with Voice Biometrics and their new video signature. Visit them at secure-a-will.com. Dot com. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. This happens, you'll hear about it first. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Final moments here. Final shopping minutes on the program. If you want to get your shots in before then, 334-272-9228. That's 334-272-9228. Now where we left off is, uh, well, RFK Jr. sitting down with Fox. And we're past Brian Kilmeade asking questions, so thank God for that. Just can't stand that. But, uh, you know, I don't mind Lawrence Jones, so take it away, Lawrence. Issues for Democrats they've talked about is the threat to democracy. You raised some eyebrows yesterday when you were comparing the former president to the current president. You said in an interview that you believe that Joe Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. This is what you have to say. Watch. When people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is it an equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. Why did you say that? And, and by the way, I said I can make that argument, and I think it's an argument that we ought to be having. President. You know, President Biden has done something that no other president in history has done, which is to order uh, media, particularly the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google, to censor his political opponents. And, I, you know, I can say this because I just won a lawsuit in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court, um, because he began censoring me 37 hours after he took the oath of office, swearing to defend the Constitution. White House officials were on uh, email with Facebook saying to them, you got to take down his post. Facebook actually pushed back and saying there, there's no misinformation here. This is actually what he's saying is accurate. And they had to make up a new term called malinformation. Right. Which is information that is accurate, but nonetheless inconvenient to, you know, politically inconvenient. So there's been no, the First Amendment was put in the Constitution. Madison Hamilton had it said, we put it, free expression, the guarantee of the First Amendment, because all the other rights are dependent on it. If you have a president who can censor his political opponents, right. he is the license for any kind of atrocity. That is a genuine threat to our democracy. I think, you know what? President Trump said about, you know, the, about questioning the election and, and you know, in, to the extent that he engaged in, uh, in an effort to overthrow that, of course, that's a threat to democracy, but it is not the worst threat undermining the First Amendment of our Constitution and then weaponizing the federal agencies uh, to get his opponents yeah. off the ballot. You know, and, and in my case, I just say particularly, Denying me Secret Service protection. That's never happened in history. You think he's behind that? 
Why? Do you think Joe Biden is behind the Of course denial? he is. And th does he know that your dad was assassinated? He has a bust of my father behind right. him at the elbow. So how does he sleep at night? Well, I don't know, but it's not, it's just not right. You know, all of these, the use of the courts, the use of prosecutors, the use of all these federal agencies to change our political landscape is just is wrong, and we should be debating about it. You know what? What President Biden did with his censorship project is he provided, he forced, he told the social media companies, we're going to rip, withdraw, we're going to bring any trust case against you, and we're going to withdraw your Section 230 immunity, which is existential for those companies, if you don't give us a portal right. to censor. And then who did he give access to that portal? The CIA, the FBI, CISA. The IRS, yep. NIH, so you had all these federal agencies that were now right. able to silence people who were questioning their policies, and that is really anti-American and anti-democratic. Man, you can see why this this guy I think is gonna surprise a lot of folks. He might do better than Perot. Uh, that's just what he's saying right there is just fantastic. It's accurate. It's pulling back the mask of this merger between corporate and state power that I think has been there for a lot longer than just the last few years. It's just now easier to see it. And, uh, well, what a year this is going to be. We're, we just got done with the first quarter of 2024. Uh, the second quarter is shaping up to be even more bonkers. Looks like I'm out of time, though. Thank God I'm a little tired. But y'all stay tuned because happy hour with Greg Budell, Rosie Brock, and I believe I see Larry Stevens in the building. The man, the myth, the legend, Larry Stevens. Well, they're next. Y'all stay tuned. from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center. This is